Hello everyone and welcome to episode two of Marvel Superheroes here on New Game Hoodis. I am your judge for this intrepid, ridiculous adventure. I'm Jason Bullman. I'm the uh, creator of the Pathfinder role-playing game and a uh, guy who likes Marvel superheroes. Before we get started here today, I'm going to toss it around the horn and let folks introduce both themselves and the ridiculous characters they made last week. Uh, we, will, we will go ahead and start with Troy. Hi, I'm Troy the Valley from the Glass Cannon Network. I'm playing a, a man who started life as Dr. Spencer Call. He got his PhD in geological studies from University of Wisconsin in Madison. And then <laughs> while traveling and uh, doing an expedition to the North Pole, something went wrong when they were doing experiments on on the polarity up there, and he was his whole team was killed, and his insides were liquefied, but <laughs> he was able to draw in everything metal from around him to basically turn him into a, a living robot, and he gained these powers to be able to very weakly draw metals towards him and <laughs> make poor <laughs> weapons with them. And Dr. Spencer Call became Meridian. <laughs> Fantastic. Uh, Alicia, why don't you go next? Hi, everybody. Hi, Nate. Good evening. I'm Alicia Marie, and I am playing mutant Yara Djorvik, or known to most as Mirror Mirror. She can mani actually, at the age of 12, right after puberty, she realized that she could manipulate 20 ounces of rhodium. I don't know how she figured that out, but yeah. let's just restart. Try at the museum. <laughs> Try like the minerals exhibit at the museum or something. Oh, yeah, like a school field trip or something. Who knows? Yeah, yeah. Like that. yeah. <laughs> it's number 45 on the periodic table. That's what we're working with. But number one in your hearts. <laughs> <clears throat> so that's why. So basically, she looks like me. Just imagine a, a couple years younger. She's 21 years old. She's originally from Slovakia. When she was 14 years old, she won national arts contest for <laughs> creating an amazing shiny rhodium, silky shiny sculpture called Space Sausage. <laughs> <laughs> with what? that win, she won a scholarship to the prestigious Royal Arts College in the UK as a glass blowing and costume jewelry. And now she's teaching and making jewelry and doing very well. Till one day she drank a soda and ended up on the floor and woke up to a pair of loafers bearing a logo she did not recognize. And now she's here in Milwaukee with these. <laughs> with these. <laughs> Happens to the best of us. <laughs> Jim, why don't you go next? I don't know if I can follow that. That is uh, too epic for words. <laughs> um, but it's all good, man. It's all good. We got this all figured out. All right, all right. Don't worry about anything. <laughs> Sammy Sear, the crystal clear, is here. <laughs> and so this uh, uh, burnout of a, of a guy in his mid-20s, uh, basically, he's got uh, uh, the power. He's got multiple powers, but all of them based around crystals, man. He was a journalist <laughs> who thought he was going to find out the secrets of the world, and he did. But they're not anything you've ever seen before. It's in the occult, dude. Crystals. Crystals surround us. And the energy pours through us. And if we understand the vibrations of the world, then we're going to understand the vibrations of our soul. And so Crystal Clear is his code name. And Sammy Sear has the ability to create crystals, particularly on glass. He can uh, make them vibrate and make annoying noises. I mean, noises. I'm sure they won't be annoying at all. <laughs> he can cause them to vibrate and explode. And probably his, uh, his most amazing power is he can temporarily turn himself invisible. But just himself. Only his body, not his clothes or anything he's touching. <laughs> so if you need some stealth... We'll just have to go back to nature, baby. <laughs> Delightful. There will be no uh, cosplaying of this character, Jim. Let's move on. <laughs> also, I'd just like to state, as I mentioned last time, although I do freelance work for Marvel Entertainment and write for Marvel Comics, this, this particular session is not canon in any known universe. Uh, there is no what if 
uh, where these characters will be showing up. There is no alternate dimension. Uh, none of what you're about to see is endorsed by the Walt Disney Corporation, Marvel Entertainment, or my editors. <laughs> well, at least I don't have to worry about you stealing these precious, precious heroes. <laughs> <laughs> well, Skid, uh, you get to round it out. Uh, I am Skid Mara, and I'm playing uh, the, what was once a mild-mannered uh, marine biologist named Dr. <laughs> Elden Ringley. However, his father, who was himself uh, ashamed of his inability to become the greatest marine biologist in the world, manipulated his baby boy in utero giving him extra organs that he did not ask for to ensure that he would one day be the greatest marine biologist the world had ever seen. Ironically, my father achieved great fame after my birth, but he disowned me because he saw me as a freak. <laughs> I am now known as Aqualung. <laughs> So, uh, now that, now that, uh, <laughs> great. Yeah. So now that we've, we've, we've met our, our brave heroes last week, um, we went through the process of creating these characters using the rules, uh, from the Marvel superhero game and those found in the ultimate powers book. Um, we, we mixed it up a bit. It's not straight, just the random rules in there, but it was pretty close. And in particular, we made sure to, uh, create heroes that, uh, are not very powerful let's 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 put it kindly like that uh and when uh so to get things off here i'll, I'll power is just relative man power is relative <laughs> yeah. you can't worry about that stuff it, 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 you just it, gotta it, focus it, on what's inside okay also it, meridian it, is incredibly powerful he's just using all of his power to stay alive right? <laughs> that's right we forgot about that if, if he lets go he just falls apart and he's dead right <laughs> he's more powerful than magneto he just can't show it he can't use sure it. sure he's allergic to tin <laughs> how often do you run into tin <laughs> <Frequently. World War laughs> <One. laughs> so uh when we last left our intrepid band <laughs> of heroes uh the group of you had been shipped off to milwaukee wisconsin there you had been tasked with uh joining a special group set up by S.H.I.E.L.D. And that special group uh, was called the Ordinary Life Initiative, an attempt by S.H.I.E.L.D. to take those of, well, lower power levels and find a way for them to be able to have happy, productive lives. And, frankly, to kind of keep an eye on them and make sure that nothing goes too horribly awry, or if their powers evolve and change, they can keep an eye on them. Uh, the game started with all of you at a red carpet lane's bowling alley uh, in the back conference room that stunk heavily of old cigarettes, stale beer, and uh, and with a kind of crackling tinny music playing overhead uh, between the sounds of bowling balls, uh, the group of you met not only each other, but a number of other um, zeros as well. Uh, as, as S.H.I.E.L.D. classifies you, your power level is zero. Um, and you met a number of other uh, of these zeros, including uh, the cheese head, Lisa Zielinski, <laughs> a woman who could turn any dairy product into another dairy product. You met Skin Deep, a uh, disillusioned uh, grunge kid from Portland uh, who can see through skin and leather. And that's it. At all times. <laughs> it's pretty grody. Uh, you met the stickler, Charles Anderson, a uh, rather large fan of comic books and uh, uh, science fiction and fantasy, who uh, apparently has the ability to stick to things. <laughs> Don't be proud of that one. No, well, he, he, he's not, but he's... Uh, <laughs> Yeah, he, he clearly uh, uh, is is a bit yeah. disgruntled about his power. Uh, you also met a big brew, a, a man by the name of Carl Muller, <laughs> who is a uh, uh, mascot for a local baseball team, and his uh, his power is that he can create beer. That's that guy kind of is the it. most valuable yeah. of all of us. <laughs> I like yeah. that guy. I'll just jump on a grenade for that dude. There he, is, he, is a, he is a jolly, happy fella. Uh, you also met uh, Herb... <laughs> 
Coleman, your shield agent who is your liaison. After giving you a mountain of paperwork, he also assigned you a uh, beeper and like a, a, a basically a credit card that has some funds in it as being part of a involuntary volunteer of the Ordinary Life Initiative, they're paying your rent and giving you other little perks as well, such as a free round of bowling. Uh, so are, you are, we, are, are we all in the same apartment when they say pay the rent? <laughs> are we like, are we, is this going to be like a wacky sitcom so, where we're all in the same <laughs> you're, not in, you're not in the same apartment, but you are all in the same apartment building. Right. Oh, nice. Okay. Uh, at least you think so. Uh, it, it sounds like Lisa Zielinski and Big Brew actually live in the area, so they, they may have homes somewhere nearby. Uh, okay. But but the other folks are from all over all over the place, so you're you're probably all in the same large apartment building. Uh, but Herb gave you some uh, tickets uh, for a free round of bowling, so you went up front and got you know uh, old. Stinky shoes from Maxine, old crusty Maxine, who is also, by the way, a shield agent. You have learned, uh, and uh, and she she gave you your shoes and sent you out to bowl. So you all went out and you bowled and relatively uh, well. I do rel recall. relatively yes. well. Most most of you most of you did okay. Uh, <laughs> and uh, in the middle of this, uh, just as um, uh. Just as Crystal Clear was heading uh, back to get more refreshments for the for the group of you, you noticed that there were three toughs who came running in to the front of the bowling alley, uh, each wearing uh, these plastic Halloween masks. One of which looked like uh, Fonzie, one of which looked like uh, Richie, and one of nice. which looked like Joni. <laughs> Fonzie has a gun and he is pointing it at the uh, person behind the concession stand screaming, give me all your money. Meanwhile, Richie and Joni have pulled out switchblades and are threatening various customers taking their purses and wallets. And I believe that's where we left off. It is. So, so <laughs> that is exactly where we will pick up. So. Um, you are in the middle of a red carpet bowling alley. And the way this works uh, here in Marvel is uh, normally uh, in the usual version of the game. Uh, it does initiative based on sides. One side goes and then the other side goes. Unfortunately, I find that to be terribly not climactic. Uh, so we're <laughs> going to let each of you roll your own initiative. And then I'll have all the, the bad guys go on their own initiative. So initiative in this game is one of the few times you don't roll percentile. This is one of those times where you just roll a D10. Okay. And if you recall Ooh. during character creation, I had you roll a D10 uh, and I had you write down your initiative bonus. So go ahead and roll a D10 and add that number and I'll come around and collect it from you. First, I'm going to go ahead and roll it for my, my, my thugs <clears throat> oh. here. My toughs. Uh, <laughs> all right. <laughs> and I'm going to go ahead and put them on the map actually, because they are here. You can see them over there to the right. Oh, this is great. This roll 20. Yep. <laughs> Let's murder them in cold blood. <laughs> <laughs> As heroes do. Yes. Yes, just, just like heroes. All right. So uh, here's, uh, let me go around and get everyone's initiative number. Aqualung, what do you got? Nine. Ooh. A nine. Very good. Meridian, what do you got? Also a nine. Oh, also a nine. Well, I'll let the two of you decide who gets to go first. I don't I don't really care. Mirror, mirror. What do you have? <laughs> Eight. Eight. Ooh. Ooh. And last but not least, crystal clear. What did you get? Six. Six. The magic right. number. <laughs> Every number is the magic number if you know what you're doing. <laughs> All right. So Aqualung Meridian, which one of you wants to go first? Aqualung? Aqualung uh, it is. Sure. All right. So here's how turns work in Marvel superheroes. On your turn, you can move up to your full speed and that can be your entire turn. Now your full speed, if I recall, everyone has a full speed of two areas. We're just gonna do yeah. area movement for this game. It makes things nice, nice and simple. Now, as you can see here, the bowling alley is divided up into a number of different colored uh, areas. Each one of those is one area. So those of you in the bowling alley area, that is the yellow area, to get to the tufts in the uh, concession area, you would need to move at least one. 
So movement isn't going to be too hard. But if you only move half your movement, so if you only move one area or not move at all, you can make an attack or use a power or do something else. Now, generally speaking, uh, your powers are all relatively straightforward. You're either punching people or throwing things or blasting things. There are some defensive actions you can take as well. Uh, you can attempt to dodge ranged attacks being made at you. You can attempt to uh, kind of size up an opponent in melee, or you can attempt to block melee attacks with your raw strength. If you decide you want to try any of those, we'll explain how they work when they happen. Otherwise, um, we're just going to kind of feel it out and let folks de describe what they're going to do. And I'll, I'll walk you through. One more question. We've got karma. Yeah. So we have our personal karma, which allows yes. us to affect roles. Do yes. we have any team karma or we're not a team yet? You do not have team karma yet because you're not yet a team. But I will tell you, <laughs> fighting a bunch of toughs like this might unify you as a team and earn Ooh. you a team karma pool. But until that point, uh, you do not have one. Uh, so okay, I, I got enough karma for everybody. Yeah, <laughs> we'll uh, we'll describe how you use karma here in just a moment. We're going to start with Aqualung. What right. would you like to do? Aqualung is a little bit limited in the, what he can do, <laughs> despite his many organs. <laughs> <laughs> really, so, but he's uh, he's never shied away from a fight, especially when he sees injustice being done. So he drops his bowling ball. <laughs> uh, leaving a giant dent in the wood. Oh. And runs with his big flippers uh, over to right one of the thugs. Are those bowling flippers? Are those regulation? <laughs> yeah, they're regulation. They're, they, they, I, I got them approved by the bowling alleys. I have special, you know, the bottoms, but they're still like, I can go for a swing quickly if I need to. So he jumps over and he says, uh, uh, Get away from that innocent person, you. Costumed enthusiast! <laughs> and he is going to utilize his special, his martial arts type D, which is a right. special type of martial arts that was taught to him by a chemically modified octopus uh, <laughs> in, in the lake, in, in Lake Michigan, uh, wow. that the octopus dubbed Kung Fugu. <laughs> and uh, he's going to attack this person. So you're just going to go up and, and attempt to punch, or is this a grapple? I'm going to punch. Okay. So here's how that's going to work. You are making a blunt attack. A blunt attack is going to be a uh, a fighting feat. So what is your fighting uh, uh, rank? Uh, feeble. It's feeble. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. So, but you There's do literally have... nothing else I can do. I have no <laughs> powers that apply in this situation. Well, you Just do. Uh, squirt you do some 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 of your organs at him. What are you talking I about? I could throw a kidney at him. Maybe <laughs> be right. grossed out and, and give up. So, uh, you do have a martial art, which I believe gives you a bonus on these sorts of things. Correct? Yeah, or is that so. just for grappling? Uh, I, it's martial arts type D. I don't. I don't. Okay. Uh, let's take a look at martial arts type D real quick. <coughs> How was this underwater training? How did this go down between you and the uh, octopus? Well, he was swimming. He was he was diving for wedding rings in the wreck of the Edmund Fitzgerald one day. <laughs> and he m ran into this octopus that had escaped from a local aquarium uh, by use of its fighting skills. And he said, uh, go away, octopus. I am busy. And the octopus said, uh, no, wait, I gotta teach you how to fight. It's like, what, you can speak? It's like, no, you're just hearing me in your brain. It's like, that's even crazier. And then we spent several months uh, under in the wreck <laughs> learning teach him teaching me how to fight. All right, in the so, octopus special. So your martial art is going to make it so that you uh, ignore armor when it comes to doing uh, slam and stun effects. These guys don't have armor, so it's probably gonna be too useful for you. But... <laughs> You can still <laughs> attempt to punch someone that is still well within your ability to do so. So, okay. uh, the way that is going to work is uh, you are going to make a fighting check. Okay. Uh, First yeah. combat <laughs> roll of the game. I'm sure this will go great. <laughs> yeah, 34. That's, yeah. <laughs> Uh, 34. So, uh, looking at the table, a 34, uh, <laughs> on the feeble, feeble. table <laughs> is going to be a, uh, a white result, which means 
a and whiff. miss. And by the way, I believe that was my 34th straight roll in the 30 to 39 range so far in this campaign. <laughs> there was there was a lot of that during character creation, if I recall correctly. All right, so you know what's interesting is like you could that's not an impossible thing for you to do, like 61 or higher. You would yeah. hit. So even even yeah. feeble people can do stuff, which is good right. to know. No. Yeah, no, I, I mean, mean feebly, the, but yes. The, the, right. the thing about this game is that even even being kind of bad at a thing, you still have a not impossible a chance. chance. It's not that like needing to roll a twenty. Uh, so um, you uh, go up and attempt to punch. Who are you trying to punch there, Fonzie? So you ran up to the, the the tough with a gun. And uh, you go up and swing wildly, but Fonzie kind of dodges back, his mask kind of slipping aside a little bit, uh, but he does manage to avoid your strike. And next up is Meridian. Which one uh, is the tough that has a gun? That would be Fonzie, the one that Aqualung just went up and attempted to punch. Okay, uh, so I will move, uh, Meridian will slide one area up and kind of get near crystal clear and aqua lung and like uh, it gets between them and uh, announces like you picked the wrong bowling lane to rob <laughs> <laughs> and he had so many choices in Milwaukee <laughs> what are the odds in Milwaukee there are dozens walk into the one full of amazing heroes <laughs> Uh, and so Meridian is just gonna extend his hand out and try to pull the gun to him Nice. Ah, very good. All right, so this is going to be a power check for you. Um, okay. Uh, so I actually think that the size of this gun and the distance. So you're you're within the same area, but it's it's got a little bit of a distance. So you're going to have to make uh, a, a power a power check for this. What is the uh, uh, rank of your magnetic manipulation? Excellent. I took the uh, allergy to ten. Uh, in order oh, to bump right. it up from good to excellent. Uh, so you sent me this amazing table here. Uh, what would you say? Do you think he's two feet away, four feet away, or ten feet away? He's he's more like ten feet away. Ten feet away? Okay, yeah. so for something this is smaller than a mailbox, I need yeah. to get at least a green success. Yeah, shouldn't be too hard. So okay. I do want to remind you before you make this roll here about how karma works. I'm not suggesting you spend karma necessarily, but I want to make sure everybody understands how karma works. Yeah. All heroes have kind of a reserve of karma. It's their good fortune that they can use to modify the fates. And if you decide that you really want to attempt to achieve success, you can spend karma on a roll. That means you must declare this before you roll and you automatically spend at least 10 points. You then make the roll, add 10 to it and see whether or not you're satisfied with the result. You can then decide to spend more than 10 to adjust the roll. But whatever you spent is gone. It's not like karma comes back the next morning. You have to earn more karma by doing good deeds, such as, I don't know, protecting innocence at a bowling alley <laughs> and and other I mean, they're at feet. an unsavory bowling alley. Is anyone innocent here? No, probably <laughs> not. <laughs> there no, no, are no, no, no innocents in this situation. You know, looking <laughs> around this. <laughs> Looking around, there's a whole bunch of people that are beer stained. These degenerates. <laughs> fishing through dirty ashtrays for you half a cigarette. Degenerates. <laughs> you wrap scallions of the lanes. Yes. <laughs> All right. So. All right. So, excellent power. I need a green success. Means I have to roll a 41 or higher. Sounds and, about right. Uh, Dr. Spencer Call is thinking to himself. God, I hope that gun isn't made of tin. <laughs> <laughs> and I rolled a 52. Yes. yes. Uh, just like 52. Fader in uh, Cloud City. Just pulls yeah. that gun over. So awesome. you you uh, you reach out and uh, and pull the gun out of Fonzie's hand. It, uh, it comes flying across the room, uh, landing in your outstretched hand. So now, now you have a gun, and you quickly come to realize this is like a cheap 38 special. It's not exactly a... Made uh, completely uh, of tin. <laughs> <laughs> no, I grab crystal clear, and I'm like, don't make me do it! <laughs> Drop your gun, so don't kill it! <laughs> no. All right. Uh, you cannot threaten his life. That'll be an extra action. You can do it next round. Uh, only one more action. <laughs> yeah, no, if only. I, Just I should to confuse him, that, like, wait, isn't he on his team? Yeah, I, I, should, 
I should note that you can actually uh, find yourself uh, in a place where you can make multiple attacks in a round, but I kind of doubt that anybody has <laughs> excellent fighting ability. You need at least excellent no. to make two attacks in a round. Um, oh, I so that is going to be Meridian's turn. You have disarmed Fonzie. Next up, these toughs are going to go just to keep things simple. I'm going to have them all go simultaneously, even though each of you get your own initiative. So, Fonzie is going to draw a knife. He's going to draw a, a switchblade and pop it out. And uh, he's looking at you, Aqualung, and he's like, You picked the wrong tough, fish boy. And he's going to attempt to stab you. <laughs> oh, no. So, uh, for him, that is a, uh, that is a uh, edged attack. So, he's going to make a fighting check. And, uh, okay, yeah, I got his fighting. Let me go ahead and make that roll. Even if he punctures a lung, you're fine. No, you're <laughs> that's right. That's right. <laughs> so uh, he he darts out with the uh, with the switchblade, and he is going to stab you, Aqualung, for four points of damage. Oh, okay. <laughs> now, are you okay. wearing a big giant rubber wetsuit? I am. <laughs> you are. <laughs> All right. You know what? I'm going to say that that counts as feeble armor. You can take Man. two off. You only oh, take great. two. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. You're wearing a giant rubber wetsuit. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. I, I'm, I'm going to remember that, though, if you ever decide to, you know, dive across a building or try and do something <laughs> oh, yeah. acrobatic. No, he's, a very, he's, not, he's, he's, he's not agile. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. So uh, that was Fonzie. Uh, next up, uh, Joni is, uh, is currently uh, seeing all of this happen, and uh, Joni is going to move over... Uh, to Meridian. Uh, we're just going to go ahead and reposition him over there. Uh, he's going to come running over there and be like, hey, give me that back, as he tries to uh, get the gun away from you. He's threatening you with the knife, um, Meridian, and he's just going to go ahead and try and stab you. Okay. <laughs> I have finite health. <coughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I actually rolled twice, but I'm going to stick with the first roll, uh, which is going to be a miss. He uh, he swings wildly, but he just does not manage to connect um, as the as the blade uh, kind of just bounces off your kind of metal skin, yeah, uh, with uh, leaving a, a a trail of sparks. The last tough does not know that this is going on and is in the arcade room currently nice. robbing people. Um, <laughs> That that's that's uh, yeah that's uh, that's Richie Richie's over in the uh, arcade room <laughs> stealing right. quarters yeah that's right uh, all right next up mirror mirror okay so Yara sees this all happening and immediately she's she's struck by something I mean she's not in a really good mood because she did skip breakfast and lunch today. So she's not in <laughs> But she has mood. the power to do that. That's right. <laughs> 10 hours only. It's been 11.5 hours. And I'm sick. <laughs> <laughs> dogs are disgusting. Slightly peckish. So, <laughs> so, uh, so she's hangry. Hangry yeah. a little bit. <laughs> I should have some of your abilities got a little bit of a tweak and you can go even longer, but you need to start making power feet checks to go 20 Ooh. hours without eating, 30 wow. hours without eating. You just need to keep making power checks. <laughs> Victoria's Secret has nothing on me. Bitches, I haven't eaten all weekend. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Yara is going to run over at Meridian and whisper in his ear, you, you are the sort of great value Magneto, right? Yes, <laughs> that's what that's what they say. <laughs> that's what the Milwaukee Record wrote about. <laughs> <laughs> you had an article in the Journal Sentinel. <laughs> <laughs> Go on. <laughs> it's on the 18th page. <laughs> it's no worry. I have a thought here. What if this is all a test? Like it's a test <clears throat> from S.H.I.E.L.D. Like they bring these weirdos in here. And if we pass the test, they make us real S.H.I.E.L.D. trainees. The, Maybe? The, 
the tough is standing like right next to you and he's like, I don't know what you're talking about, lady. Give me your money. <laughs> is this true, room? Chachi? <laughs> or are you Jody? He's gonna... <laughs> I'm Jody. Jody. Chachi couldn't make it tonight. <laughs> But he loves you. He's about like two feet away from me the, the first time. Yeah, just standing there. Okay. <laughs> that is an and astute his, observation. His Mira, mask Mira. is starting to slip off a little bit. <laughs> a little. A little bit? Yeah. yeah. And would it, okay, is it an attack if she like, first of all, she turns toward him like, how dare you address <laughs> me? And like reaches and like sort of rips his mask off. Is you that gonna snap it on his face? Okay. Oh, that's yeah, I like uh, that. Nobody likes that. Because <laughs> I have something I want to do if I can. <laughs> uh, you, uh, what would you like to try? <laughs> okay, I would like to rip his mask off, and then you see, Yara has like a mirror <laughs> that she wants to hold up to his face and make him look in it. You're going to make it him regret his powers. life choices? <laughs> <laughs> Look at those crow's feet. So, uh, <laughs> Look! Why don't you go home and moisturize? No. No. I'm hideous. So, what is Mirror Mirror's strength? What is my mirror's strength? What is, what is your character's strength rank? Oh. You think I'm going to throw it at him? Okay, wait. No, no. To, to grab something off somebody is a strength feat. My strength is, yeah. why did I write it down? It's a good eight. So we got good a good eight, eight going on. All right. So go ahead and roll percentile and let's see if you can uh, yank this uh, this Tuff's mask off. Oh, what? <laughs> oh, I got a hundred? What? Oh. Whoa. <laughs> you got double zeros? That's a crit. Is that possible? You got possible? double zeros? Yeah, yeah it's possible. Zero's possible. Yeah, yeah. It's absolutely possible. You rip his whole okay. face off. <laughs> you, you, you go to pull the mask off, and it, and you like, you you grab it, and like it it not only comes off, it like pulls the 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 elastic band snaps, so it just pulls c completely off of his head, and he's now you know you can now see him. He's got stubble and a scar, and he looks like he grew up on the tough streets of Milwaukee and uh, and uh, he's just like like looking around now panicked because everyone can see him he you know he had a mask no, on so that you. no one could identify him yeah uh, so uh, he looks suddenly panicked uh, but yeah you ripped the mask right off his right off his face nice yeah right all right I uh, see you <laughs> all right, so uh, that will be the end of your turn, but uh, he is yes. clearly shaken by that move. Uh, next up, bottom of the order, crystal clear. What do you got hey, for man. us? All right, all right, everybody. Everybody's just got to calm. Just got to calm down. And so I'm going to start <laughs> slam my hands onto the counter, and I assume it's a glass top counter. Of course it is. Underneath is a bunch of gum and candy <laughs> Amazing. and stuff. I'm going <laughs> to yeah. just transform it all into crystal. Ooh. All right. <laughs> uh, if I recall correctly, that requires you to make a power, power check. A power feet. check, yeah. Power feet, yeah. Uh, it's remarkable. 30 is my uh, is my base on that. Sounds good. And I rolled terribly. Just, just <laughs> terribly. Oh, no. With a 13. Oh. A 13. Mm. So, um... Yeah, only kind of partially using your power it like crystal kind of spreads out from the corners where your hands touch it but instead of making this giant crystal bloom all you've managed to do is kind of put crystal and spider webs throughout the uh, entire thing and like you know part of the corner cracks and falls into the case below and you can see Maxine has ducked behind the the the, uh, the counter and she is currently opening up a drawer, and you can see in that drawer is a shotgun. <laughs> Amazing. Whoa. All right. I'm sort of looking down, and I'm like, no, no, there's no need for violence here. This is all a, a, a misinterpretation. These people here probably just have some sort of, uh, you know, complaints about the local government or something. <laughs> Why don't we? Why don't we talk this out? And I'm like running my finger over the little crystals, kind of getting absorbed in them and looking over at them. I'm like, I, anything can be figured out with just a little bit of, a little bit of, a little bit of understanding, man. 
She looks up at you with like, and and to be clear, Maxine is like she's got to be like seventy five years old. Yeah, and she has like a cigarette hanging from her lip, half of which is ash. Amazing. And she gra- she's grabbing the shotgun and she goes, "Honey, I'm gonna negotiate my way." And she's like, <laughs> "Awesome! All right." All right, uh, that was crystal clear. We are back to the top of the order. Aqualung, you've been stabbed. I mean, a little. <laughs> <laughs> oh, one of my pancreases. You will pay for that. Pancreai. One of my pancreai. That is a sound I cry out when one of them is punctured. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to punch him again. All right. <laughs> A 74. Hey! A 74 is a solid punch. Even uh, with your feeble fighting ability, that is going to hit. What is your strength? Uh, my strength is typical. Typical. <laughs> so you are going to punch this tough for six points of damage. Yeah! Six a typical that. punch. <clears throat> um... <laughs> So you, uh, your fist goes flying out and catches this uh, tough in the jaw. Um, he like shakes it off. He's got some blood dripping, dripping uh, down from underneath his mask. And he looks at you and he just goes, "You'll pay for that, you <laughs> freak." Uh, you can technically move if you want to, but uh, that's up to you. Can I? I can't. Can I activate my my force field, or is that like a? Oh uh, sure, action? you could. No, you can. You can activate your force field. Yeah. That's okay. Fine. Uh, you think so? Well, try getting through this, and this little this like uh, soap bubble appears around. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, "What the hell? <laughs> Do your worst, land dweller." <laughs> Meridian. So you said you needed at least remarkable fighting to uh, attack twice. I actually have incredible fighting. So Ooh. can I make two attacks? So the way it works is if you decide that you want to attempt to make more than one attack in a round, Mm -hmm. you have to start by making a uh, fighting feat and it has remarkable intensity. So um, the way this works is sometimes you compare your power rank or your ability rank to the intensity of what you're trying to do. In this case, your fighting is one category higher than the intensity of the feat of attacking twice. Mm -hmm. So that means you would need to make a fighting feat and you would need to get a green because your ability is higher than the intensity of what you're trying to do. Okay, uh, you know, I'll try it just for the heck of it. See what happens here. This, This game moves pretty clean. Cleaner than I remember when I was a kid. Yeah, Maybe because... Wait for it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> See, it's pretty clean. All right, so uh, if I have incredible fighting, uh, yes. I've just got to get a 31 or higher. Uh, correct. Yep. Uh, 56. Old Lawrence Taylor. 56 will do it. Okay. All right, so uh, you can make two attacks this round. Great. So he takes. he looks down at the gun and he thinks to himself, should I tinker this and turn it into a knife? And he's like, no, that would be ridiculous. I have a gun. Uh, So he takes the gun. He looks at the guy. He's like, you make an ugly Joni. And he just pistol whips him twice. (laughs) All right. So that is going to be a blunt attack. So that's going to be a fighting feat. So you can go ahead and uh, and you have what? You said you had uh, incredible. Incredible Incredible 36. Oh, my God. Okay. uh, Yeah. Yeah, so uh, go right ahead and make your <laughs> fighting feat. All right. Uh, all right, so first attack is uh, actually a miss with a 19. A 19 mm. is not going to do it. All right, oh. so uh, yeah, you go ahead and uh, and swing uh, wildly with the gun, but he uh, dodges out of the way. So then I come back again with my back fist uh, trying to... <laughs> He's just, now I'm just embarrassed that I miss. Yeah, sure. I mean, that makes sense. <laughs> and uh, and this one barely hits with a 37. Oh. A so. 37 is going to be a hit. So um, the way this works is normally when you're attacking with an instrument, um, you either do your strength or the damage rating of the instrument, whichever is lower. Mm. It's why the thing attacks with his fists and not a pipe. Right. Um, so, what is your strength? 
My strength is good eight. Good eight. Okay, so uh, this is going to do uh, just uh, f- six points of damage. Okay. Um, so uh, I'm going to go ahead and put six on this tough. Um, you uh, uh, pistol whip him with the butt of the uh, 38 special, <laughs> um, and his mask is off. He's now bleeding, and you're beating him with a gun. And he's just like, he's, what, what are you freaks? He's, uh, and we haven't that come is, up with a name yet. Yeah. That is, we don't have a name. That is going to be the end of Meridian's turn. Next up are the Tufts. The first one is staring at this bubble and is going to attempt to stab uh, Aqualung through the bubble. Let's see what we got here. Trying to an pop your 80, bubble. Yeah, he's going to try and pop the bubble. <laughs> and an 83 is certainly going to do it. That is a Uh-oh. yellow success. <clears throat> How... Ever, your force field is up, and I'm only doing four points of damage. How much does your force field block? It is it is a typical force field. <laughs> typical. So it's going to block six. So in other words, the switchblade can do nothing to it. He stabs it, <laughs> and the blade kind of bends, and he's like, he's looking at it, he's like, you... You freaks! And he's like backing up to, to, to run out of the place. Uh, that's ah, what. Face the power yeah. of the aquatic grass legs! <laughs> <laughs> that is Fonzie. Next up, Joni is uh, going to attempt to stab. Oh boy. You know, uh, Joni has been unmasked and is being beat with a pistol. Uh, he <laughs> is. He is going to attempt to uh, uh, stab Meridian as he uh, starts looking towards the exit. So we're going to go ahead and make that roll. Here it is. Don't be a fool, Joni. (laughs) (laughs) That is a 36, which is going to be a miss. He was downshifted uh, one uh, uh, skill level uh, because he's so shaken by what's happened to him. Uh, And he is going to attempt to flee. He's going to move uh, out the front door. So he goes running out the front door. Uh, meanwhile, Richie is shoot still him. <laughs> shooting <laughs> in the back. <laughs> the hero's way. Richie, meanwhile, is uh, still in the arcade robbing everyone. Uh, unaware that anything bad is happening because they're screaming and all sorts of stuff going on. Um, next up, Mirror Mirror. All right. Um, so, okay, so she, right now she's sort of next to Meridian and I'm trying to think if she she's going to try to actually get to Richie so this is what I want to do and you can tell me whether or not I can do it she, because I can manipulate Rhodium do I have to have Rhodium on me or can I create you it? can create it yeah okay yeah, yeah, yeah. I actually want to go over to Crystal Clear's now shiny crystal countertop. Yeah. yeah. Put like a little bit of rhodium on it if I have time to do that. <laughs> and basically she wants to take like a running slide, like a slip and slide all the way like to launch herself slip and slide across the counter like boots first into Richie. Can I get there? While, while creating <laughs> rhodium on the counter at the same time? <laughs> well, you, what you can do... Actions? Yeah, well, Richie is in the arcade, so you can go running into the arcade and, like, slide yes. across the top of the arcade cabinets to attempt to kick Richie right in the face. Yes! All right. Um, so, uh, that is going to be a blunt attack, so that's going to be a fighting feat. Um, so, Ooh. what is your fighting rank? My fighting is a good six. Nice. Good. All right. So go ahead and roll me percentile as you go uh-huh. charging into the arcade to kick Richie in the face. In the face. 93. Oh, my <laughs> gosh. Awesome. Here I so. come. <laughs> So, uh, that is going to be a slam. So, what is your strength? My strength is a good eight. Whew. All right. <laughs> um, mirror, mirror. Indeed. 
So, uh, that... Uh, C slams. Okay. So, uh, you are going to do, you said, a good eight? Yes. All right. So that is going to do eight points of damage to this uh, poor, unfortunate tough. <laughs> yeah. Nice. It's the boots. <laughs> she has, like, healed boots on that are really shiny. Like, just inappropriate. She refuses to put on the, the bowling shoes, so she still has shiny, like, silver nice. boots on. And she made them, right? That's right. Yes. Yeah. It's like slip and slide across that counter, man. Boots <laughs> first into the face. And the whole time, it's cool because she's sort of posing like this as she's going down <laughs> the counter. Just flying through the air. Yeah, like slow motion. You guys are like, whoa, her hair is flying. She's like. You've got to give it to her. She's got a sense of style. <laughs> All right. So uh, here's how this works. You have slammed mm -hmm. this foe. This is like a special effect because you hit him so hard. So the way this is going to work is that. The uh, the tough is now going to attempt an endurance feat, uh, and his endurance is not great. Uh, but a seventy three is actually pretty good. That's a green. <laughs> um, so uh, you kick him so hard that he goes slamming back into an arcade cabinet. Like he he would have gotten thrown an entire area. Like he would have been thrown out of the place, but he can't, there's nowhere he can go. So he's literally slammed back into the wall and I'm gonna go ahead and deal him more damage because of that. Uh, <laughs> he looks in really bad shape now. Uh, he, he goes slamming into one of the pinball machines and the uh, the little ticket thing pops open and just starts shooting tickets all over him. <laughs> nice. And he's just kind of sitting there looking all dizzy and dazed. Uh, you're not sure if he's out of the fight, but he's definitely definitely really messed up. Crystal clear, it is now your turn. Okay. So, and there's just the one remaining guy in the arcade. That's the only one left, right? The other two fled. Um, no, Fonzie is still technically in the uh, bar oh, right. area, but right, his, right. His, his switchblade is kind of a U-shape right now after stabbing the force field, and he right. doesn't have a gut anymore. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, I'm going to approach him, and I'm just going to sort of be like, look, dude, We've all had a really, really long day, and we're all just trying to make the best of things. And I can tell you're trying to make the best of things. So why don't you and me come to an understanding? And I'm gonna try and talk him into either giving up or fleeing <laughs> in, a, in a heroic fashion here. All right. Um, so using you know my what? reason? Yeah, I think that's gonna be, uh, uh, we'll call that a nothing, reason. if not reasonable. Yeah, sure. <laughs> we'll we'll go ahead and call it a reason feat. Uh, but uh, uh, yeah, well, why don't you just roll and we'll see what we'll see what result we get here. So, what's your reason? So my reason is typical five. I mean, all right, that's what the sheet says. <laughs> but I I know that I'm more than typical. I've got some <laughs> insight into this dude and the kind of struggles that we're all having, man. I was I was just thinking the same thing. <laughs> I also uh, rolled an 82. Yeah. You rolled an 82, um, which is a solid yellow. Um, uh, yeah, he's like, listen, I don't, I, we picked the wrong place. I just, I'm just going to, I'm just going to go. Is that okay? I'm just going to go. <laughs> and I'm going to sort of motion towards the door. I'm going to say, your destiny awaits, my dude. <laughs> <laughs> my dude. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Aqualung. Uh, so there was, he's running away. Aqualung, he's got his flippers on, his okay. bowling shoe uh, sold flippers. <laughs> he sees this guy running away, he feels like he can't catch him. So, and, but he he's, doesn't want him to get away. <laughs> so in desperation, he reaches into his pocket and throws a fistful of, uh, of Great Lakes corroded wedding rings at him. <laughs> Probably it's a little effect, I would imagine. Yeah, I, 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 I would imagine as well. But you know what? We're going to go ahead and roll it. That's going to be a uh, agility check as you do a thrown blunt attack. Uh, 46. And my agility is typical. Typical 5. So you go throwing a whole bunch of corroded wedding rings at him. And uh, they, go, they go scattering around and... and uh, he, he did, he's not really affected by it, but he is like, what the hell? He's just like, I'm leaving. What do you, what do you freak want from me? Jeez. 
<laughs> in true late 80s early 90s style freak is really the only insult word they know yeah. it's amazing <laughs> it's yeah. yeah it's the only yeah. one they can say in the comic yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh so uh aqualung uh throws a bunch of pocket trash at the, <laughs> at, the at the at the retreating uh uh, uh thief uh meridian all right, so this is what Meridian wants to do. He sees the guy running out the door. He wants to take the gun and tinker it to turn it into uh, something, uh, you know, just that isn't a gun. You uh, can so just turn can... it into like a sphere, right? I mean, you right, can just yeah. kind of... <laughs> brrr, brrr, yeah. So that's what he does. Vroom, he tinkers it, turns it into a sphere, and then just throws it like a snowball at this guy. <laughs> because one of his talents is he gets a plus one column shift when using thrown weapons. Oh, that's right. Made. Oh, right. It's amazing. I have an amazing oh, ability to throw. Awesome. So he's just like, come back here. Boom! <laughs> like Buddy the Elf throwing snowballs in Central Park. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, let's see. All right. So that's going to be an agility feat. Oh, God! Oh, no. I had to get a 26 or higher, and I rolled a 24. Oh. oh, oh! Amazing, and he just <laughs> goes. Amazing would be different. It's not amazing at all. Yeah, no, it just <laughs> flies into the next county. Right. Past. So you go, you go uh, winging this guy's uh, gun at him, and it uh, it flies outside and like dents the getaway car that's sitting out there, <laughs> and. Uh, <laughs> Uh, Joni, who's running out to that getaway car right now, just turns around and is just like, "We're going, we're going." <laughs> as uh, as the as the criminal flees to the vehicle. Uh, next up are the criminals, and uh, this is this is pretty much going to be it. Fonzie goes running out and hops into the vehicle. Joni hops into the vehicle, and Richie's kind of dazed and confused, and is just now trying to stand up but is like covered in tickets and loose change and stuff that is blown out of this exploded pinball machine. Uh, and uh, it just kind of is staggering about. Um, mm -hmm. So uh, I'm gonna go around real quickly and see if anybody wants to try and stop the getaway car or you're just gonna let them go. Mirror, mirror, are you doing anything or are you just letting the toughs escape? Jeez. She's going to let the getaway car go because she's already started eyeing mm. the counter where Marnie is putting, like, frozen pizza in the <laughs> thing. <laughs> <clears throat> but she's going to she's she's gonna order the pizza, but she's, you know, allergic to phosphorus. So she's going to order it with, like, you know, no cheese, no sauce, and no bread. <laughs> <laughs> what? Maxine currently has a shotgun, and, and uh, you're, you're coming up to her with an order. Uh, but <laughs> order. She's just like... Where'd they go? <laughs> Please, just collect my tickets later. That's all. <laughs> Crystal clear. You got anything you wanna you wanna try here? So before I don't these? have to actually touch things to affect them with my crystal power. Correct. So I'm gonna turn the windshields into crystals so they can't see out of them because they're gonna be all oh, faceted nice. and messed up. Oh, oh no. Smart. So I'm gonna sort of I, lean out the window and be like, "We were still talking, dude. We're like, come on, we're. I thought we were gonna like connect and bond and stuff on our right. mutual shared problems." All right, so uh, that is an 86. And what's your power rank again? My power rank for crystal creation is remarkable 30. That is very good. That is a yellow result. Um, which so I'm just sort of like concentrating, <clears throat> like, dude, just, just hang, hang out. It's okay. <laughs> so I believe that allows you to like double the volume, if I yes. recall correctly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So like the thin sheets of, of, of glass suddenly balloon into these crystalline shapes all over the front. It even gets like the mirror and the rear view mirror and stuff. And the car now is clearly like heavier in the front where the windshield is and whatnot. Um, and uh, the 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 toughs who are inside are are they look like they're gonna gun it anyway, despite the fact that they now clearly cannot see out the window, nor can they open the windows. Amazing, because they can't roll them down yeah. anymore. <laughs> That's right. I should say that we we glass cannon as a house rule that if you roll an eighty six in a given situation, it's the worst possible thing happens. But that, <laughs> not not here today. That's the, That's the, right. 
It's just in the main shows. I don't nice. follow your rules. It's, it's a decent <laughs> show. It's a, yeah, it doesn't follow 69, our silly rules. the best possible result. Right? Oh, well, I, I, right. I, I, I see where you're going with that. Yeah. Uh, we, have, we, have, we have fun. <laughs> uh, let me ask a question. Are there yeah. any living aquatic creatures in the immediate vicinity of their car? <laughs> Is there an aquarium? Ooh. Like a couple yes. guys carrying an aquarium? <laughs> Um, you, you don't, you don't see any, uh, <laughs> like, um, there's, there's it. no aquarium. There are, uh, this place is a bowling alley and it's a uh, Friday night. So there is a fish fry. <laughs> okay. Does, does yeah. that count? Wow. Unfortunately, unless the fish are extremely fresh tonight, that will not help me. No. So he's just gonna, he's going to say drat and just get a jump on, uh, recovering the, the wedding rings. Just gonna just get on his hands and knees and start finding <laughs> wedding rings. To get through. Very, very good. All right, Meridian. So Meridian will walk outside. He just kind of slowly walks out. He's very. He kind of moves like Doctor Manhattan. He's very mm-hmm. slow. He walks yeah. out there and except way more powerful. Except way more. <laughs> Sadly, sure. all his powers yeah. are going to keeping himself alive. And he just he he lifts his hand out and reaches towards the car. Oh, and no. I have to get a if I get a red success, which is a ninety five or higher, <laughs> I'll be able to pull the car towards me. <laughs> so he just is like. Let's see if this works. And just reaches out. I mean, this would be amazing, but he has to try. He like, has to practice as his powers. As you're doing it, like, bits of your own metal are, like, popping and falling off. I got a 71. You just got a bump. Oh, no. Which so is close. a yellow success, but I needed a red success based on the Does size of the vehicle. Does he get the bumper? Yeah. Does he take uh, it? Yeah, no, it does pull off the rusty bumper. So yes. you get that. Um, <laughs> For, for, for just a moment, the wheel spin of this, uh, you know, 1988 Buick Regal and uh, <laughs> the, the, the wheel spin a whole bunch. You pull the rusty bumper off and now it's their turn. So the car goes spinning off and the combination of no windshield, no ability to see and the like the fact that they revved up before pulling off because you were holding it just a little um, means that they take off much faster than they would like. I'm going to go ahead and make one check for these poor, poor, unfortunate toughs to see whether or not they control this vehicle or if they immediately crash into a nearby object. I don't think a 64 is going to do it because they needed a uh, yellow success and they did not get it. So uh, the the bumper gets ripped off, coming landing at your feet. The, the the car peels forward, smoke, screeching tires, and slams directly into a light post that's in the parking lot, <laughs> ten feet away. <laughs> the whole front end of the car gets bent in. You hear a bunch of kind of wet thuds as the two toughs hit the windshield because they didn't have time to put on their seatbelts. <laughs> They're dead. They're dead. <laughs> well, they only, went, they, only, they only went about 15 feet, so they're probably not dead. But but they're not in good shape. Uh, and uh, at that, we are going to go ahead and drop This is heroism out. at its finest. <laughs> I gotta tell you. Like, only the finest heroes. Yeah, no. Uh, we are going to go ahead and drop out of initiative because, frankly, mm. this combat is over. Over. Uh, so uh, if this will kind of return back to just kind of narrative storytelling. Uh, so what if what do you want to do? Um, you know, anybody? What what do you do now? <laughs> just start looking around and I go, that was pretty stressful, everybody. Why don't we just like take a moment to breathe, breathe and then have a beer and uh, we can toast our our first success. So uh, uh, more. Of what uh, you had before. <laughs> What's left Be- of my body cannot process alcohol. <laughs> <laughs> but I will join you in spirit. <laughs> big Big Brew comes over and just starts filling up people's uh, beer yeah. mugs with his finger. Um, <laughs> which does have the unfortunate side effect of his finger is in your beer. But, you know, th- it's the price it's you pay. It's free beer, <laughs> right? 
Um, and uh, the rest of the bowlers and whatnot, many of which had started ducking behind stuff, uh, slowly get up. Big Brew and Cheesehead had kind of hit the deck, uh, uh, both having powers that are of incredibly limited utility against <laughs> against armed robbers. Um, <laughs> Uh, Mirror, Mirror, you also saw that Skin Deep is in the arcade and she has her Walkman at her side and her headphones on. So she was just jamming away playing pinball. She didn't even notice anything happened. Amazing. (laughs) Teenagers. (laughs) <laughs> that's very early 90s the one the one character just like lost in the music yeah oh, yeah. yeah you can hear you can hear Pearl Jam coming out of the one earbud and she's just she's just jamming away damn this book just sorry go on I keep forgetting what year it is yeah <laughs> it is it, yeah it's 1996, it's 1996 so yeah yeah like, whoa. yeah yeah <laughs> Um, so, uh, yeah, you've got a, you've got a tough, uh, who's trying to get up and is stumbling around and is completely dazed. Um, you want to do anything about that? Walk over to him. Who do you want to talk? Dr. Doom? (laughs) 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 On a scale of one to Dr. Doom, who do you work for? I just, I I work for, I work for Rick. He's the guy in the Fonzie mask. (laughs) (laughs) Oh Rick my God! You forgot like us. <laughs> <laughs> we know you are his herald. He just, he just <laughs> tell him that Earth will never, will never surrender. <laughs> he just kind of sits down and he's like, "Man, I think I hit my head. You're talking nonsense." <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Sit down, relax, relax. It's gonna be okay. Call the um. ambulance. <laughs> <laughs> we should call the local PD to come yeah, around these guys. I was going to say, Aqualong yeah, shield is gonna... agents aren't good enough. Is that? Well, <laughs> so Maxine is on the phone to call the police. Uh, Herb comes out a moment later. Mm-hmm. He was just in back and Jeez. comes out with like his his service revolver, and he's he's kind of. But <laughs> mind you, he's he's way overreacting, and everything's over by now, and he's just like. Oh, wow. Looks like uh, all yous really took care of this. <laughs> we did. We were successful. So now are we shield agents or what? Should we move to what? New York immediately? I mean, the answer, <laughs> the answer seems pretty clear, man. No, uh, you know, now that uh, now that you done uh, fought some burglars, no, nah, nothing's changed. You're still, we're still gonna, <laughs> we're still gonna try and make sure that you, uh, you, you get uh, a good life, you know. Uh, but yeah, and you didn't wreck the place, so that's good. See, you're learning already. This, this initiative's gonna be great. <laughs> um, and uh, he uh, goes to talk to Maxine, and they call the local police, and and within thirty minutes, the police show up. Uh, you know, uh, it's, it's a pretty decent response time. And, uh, the ambulance actually shows up first to deal with the two toughs who are out in the parking lot. They got pretty messed up, but they're, they're alive. Um, I've used that bumper. I've manipulated that bumper to wrap around their bodies so they can't run away. <laughs> oh, cool. <laughs> Classic. I'm just staring at the windshield. I'm literally just staring, <laughs> staring at the windshield. Just Pattern. like, yeah, yeah man. <laughs> Is it, yeah, because it's making of... like all trippy colors when I move my head in front of it. <laughs> so you're like manipulating the bumper and like doing awesome stuff, and I'm just standing there like, uh, just, just uh, dancing to smooth jazz that only you can hear. That's right. Smooth jazz. <laughs> and Aqualong is still collecting rings. <laughs> yeah. He's crawling into arcade cabinets <laughs> trying to find the last couple. Yeah, no, that I mean that's that that's. That's fair. Uh, <laughs> they could be anywhere. Uh, so, uh, you know, within about within about half an hour or so, uh, the police show up. Uh, Herb, Agent Agent Coleman comes to talk to all of you and is like, listen, it would be helpful if you, you know, you know, maybe you didn't mention that you, you know, can bend metal and create crystals and I stuff. I mean, he's so, a fucking robot. <laughs> just go, just go sit down. I'll explain it all. Don't worry. Surely. Um, and uh, and and her difficult goes, to conceal ourselves. <laughs> I'm well, stuffed with organs. He is made out of <laughs> junk. 
<laughs> she is covered in rhodium. <laughs> and look at him, he's a filthy hippie. <laughs> How there can is no disguising us. Uh, <laughs> I'll tell him it's costume night. So, uh, <laughs> All right. uh Agent, Agent Coleman sort of goes a to talk. It's a feeble attempt. It's, well, it's, a, <laughs> it's a your shield. I, who am I? <laughs> he, he goes to talk to the cops, and you can see him pull out his shield badge, and he, he talks to him, and he's like, yeah, you know, uh, we, we got some some toughs, and, and he kind of takes care of the problem. He, he gets it smoothed over. They take all three of them into custody, and uh, the group of you are now uh, united. The, the four of you fought off a bunch of toughs. So I'm going to give you all... Uh, a little bit of karma for that. You oh, didn't destroy gosh. the place, so that's cool. that's good. And you and you captured all three of the toughs. So uh, I'm going to start the you all off with a group karma pool of thirty. Ooh, so nice. uh, that's a, that's a group pool that all of you can pull from. But once it's gone, it's gone. And if it okay. makes it to the end, it gets divvied up amongst all of you. So uh, yeah, someone keep track of that. I don't I don't care who. Um, I've written it down. All right. Uh, so uh, a few minutes go by. The cops come, take statements from a handful of folks, and and but escort the the toughs off. Uh, they do come and chat with you, but I would uh, love th- to give my statement. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. The cop comes over and he's like, uh, "Hey, so uh, word is that uh, the four of you helped uh, apprehend these toughs." Look, Can here's how it went down, man. It's real simple. These guys were out of astral alignment. <laughs> they did not understand that this bowling alley, the, what is this place? The Red Lanes? Red Carpet Lanes. The Red Carpet <laughs> Lanes is directly on a ley line. Oh. And the minute they stepped in here, they put it out of alignment. It it just brought itself back. That's all that was happening. One the, moment the, we were out, now we're back. <laughs> Everything's cool. The, the rest of you noticed the detective stopped writing the moment he mentioned <laughs> the line. <laughs> you, you see him write the word nonsense down, <laughs> and he goes, well, that's really good to hear. Any of the rest of you got a statement? What? Are, why are you wearing a wetsuit? <laughs> oh, uh, it was, uh, it is costume night. <laughs> <laughs> Try eating a few less bratwurst there, buddy. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> all right, either you got a statement you want to make? <laughs> um, yes, I am feeling the emotion of joy. <laughs> joy. Joy at this moment that we have apprehended the criminals. Great. Joy. Yeah, all in a good day's work, right? <laughs> yes. That is something I've read that people say. <laughs> Good day, yeah. officer of the law. <laughs> and you, shiny, you got anything for me? You look over and uh, Mira Mira is wearing the Fonzie mask because she just put it on. This <laughs> <laughs> love costume. Amazing. <laughs> He's and she's in a better mood because she had her whatever to eat and she turns to the she says look in this mirror <laughs> you think you are handsome hmm it, I want uh, you to rest your face your whole face rest your mouth your eyebrows that's it rest your face <laughs> now do you feel handsome uh no <sighs> it's really kind of weirding me out Agent Coleman, are these these four under your care? <laughs> He's like, yep. <laughs> He's like, gotcha. All right, you four, make sure to take your pills, and uh, we'll see you later. Thank you. Yeah. And he he gets the hell out of here. Him and his partner talk for a few minutes. He like motions. You can you can't hear them talking, but he's motioning to his partner. His partner kind of leans over his shoulder to look at all of you, and they I just, just shake, wave. <laughs> yeah. They just shake their head and go. Uh, goodbye. Um, Happy costume night. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And you can hear one of them go, why isn't anyone else in a costume? That's weird. Uh, <laughs> so um, you're all uh, 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 gathered back together at your lane and uh, everything in the bowling alley is kind of returned to normal. And uh, uh, Agent Coleman. special about lane four. 
there's something special right here. You can feel it. All of us <laughs> standing here. <laughs> yes. After all that tension and stress, and now everything's gonna be all right. The people at the lane are like, "This is our lane. Yours is five. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Are we on five? <laughs> <laughs> um, shuffle aside. <laughs> just awkwardly shuffle. Yeah, we, <laughs> like, we're, we're on we turned them we're on five we're on five. That's what you thought this was four. We're actually on could have sworn we were on four. I yeah, that's, that's, that's the guy's like, yeah, that's my ball. And he just kinda <laughs> pulls it off your fingers with a with a wet pop. <laughs> I thought it was Ali ball. <laughs> um So uh, Agent Coleman's standing near you, and uh, all of a sudden you hear beep 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 beep. beep, beep, beep Sorry, beep, beep. I swallowed and, a cell phone uh, earlier. <laughs> <laughs> I had to swallow a cell phone in order to stay alive. <laughs> Coleman, <laughs> Coleman looks at his beeper, and and remember, he gave you all a beeper, and he told you to wear it at all times. I'm staring at my not functional beeper right now. I'm just yeah, staring no, at it. None, none of yours is doing anything, but his is lit all up. Whoa. And he's like, oh, that's not good. And uh, he uh, he goes up to the front desk, uh, and he's like, why don't why don't you all come with me? And he gets up to the front desk where he hops on the 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 terminal that's there. That's mostly just used for for bowling control but uh, he flips a few <laughs> buttons and it pulls up a shield logo I wanted to do like in the Spider-Man and his amazing friend and it like flips all the furniture oh. and, weak, weak, and it like flips yeah. over to like yeah. a sassy the little the bowling Kirby trophy computer. like oh, pulls yeah. it down yeah yeah mm -hmm. it's it's like that but not quite as nice not, it's not mostly just, yeah no it's, it's, <laughs> it like half turns and then gets stuck and he has to kind of beat on it <laughs> and, and yeah and eventually it flips over and he's like Yeah, I got a problem. Uh, he's typing away and he's like, that's weird. So, Charles's beeper just went offline. Ooh. Charles Xavier? Charles Anderson, the stickler. Oh. If you recall, when you got done with bowling, the stickler left. He said he had to go watch reruns of Next Generation. Oh, uh, yeah. So, uh, he, hmm. he bugged out. Um, and he's like, yeah, let me pull up the last known location. Oh, that's, we got to go. Everybody come with me. Um, what and is it, agent? he's like, listen, your beepers, not only as, as he takes you out back, he's got a, a big kind of, uh, one of those carpet, you know, wall to wall carpet paneled vans. Mm -hmm. Uh, <laughs> it's quality. It's, it's brown with like a stripe of beige and it has like a bubble window on the back. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, he, he, Wait a minute. <laughs> he's, like, he's like, get in. And uh, he, he gets up and he, he opens up the door. And I'm it's getting a, in the passenger side, just sliding right in beside him. <clears throat> <laughs> he's like, yeah, I knew you'd appreciate this. Uh, so uh, there's plenty of seats in there for everybody. And he, uh, the moment you're inside, he, he kind of tears off. And as you're driving through the streets of Milwaukee, he explains, yeah, those beepers, they, they're not just for me to communicate with you. They, they monitor your vitals and they, they kind of check you for any weird power spikes. It's, it's just like, it's a safety chakras. precaution. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't know what that is, but yeah, you know, <laughs> kind of like that. <laughs> and, uh, as he's driving through it, he's like, yeah, Stickler's beeper just went dead. Mm. And uh, he uh, he's tearing through uh, the neighborhoods, and he makes his way over to the east side of the city. the The place that you were at the bowling alley was kind of on the north side, so it takes about a good 10, 15 minutes. Hey, uh, this he, is really close to the guy who sells me weed. If you could just like <laughs> just just go take a left up here, we could stop like, real fast, man. And like, I'll just take care of it. He's like, maybe after. Let's go make sure that Stickler's all right. Hey, Jim, and, I'm sure uh, we could stop quickly so the man can purchase some weed. <laughs> <laughs> I don't understand what the rush is. <laughs> He's like, these beepers got batteries that are supposed to last months. It shouldn't have gone dead. He just got it, like, he just got a replacement, like, two weeks ago. 
I'm um, already like pulling at the panel on mine where the batteries are. Like I'm already <laughs> just messing with it. You'll need I'm like, a, oh really? How much juice do you think is in there? You'll need a <laughs> screwdriver. Uh, so. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! Try now. Time to take it apart. <laughs> so uh, after after about ten minutes of driving, you arrive at the uh, local university campus. And uh, as he kind of drives through the, the, the various quads, um, you can see up ahead, there's kind of an orange light. And he comes pulling up in front of uh, one of their science buildings. And just as you arrive up on the top floor, one of the windows just blows out in a massive explosion. Foosh, just this blast of flame wow. uh, that lights up the night sky. There's no one else around except for the group of you. Mm. Right uh, after the explosion, there's that shocked moment. And then I go, you guys are going to find this funny. This place <laughs> is on a friggin' ley line too. <laughs> <laughs> Herb is just staring up at the, the massive explosion. And he's just like, we should, we should call somebody. <laughs> we are. And I'm going to open the car it. door and I'm like, we are somebody. Yes. yes. Just sort of step out. He's right. like, I'm gonna go call the fire department. Uh, that won't be necessary, Agent. For we are Lane Four. <laughs> 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 oh, I can't fly. Typically <laughs> four. <laughs> we are typically four. That's the. Yeah. Lane. All right. So uh, you, you're you're out in front of this uh, 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 science building. Uh, on the on the university campus, the top floor is engulfed in flames. Uh, not the entire top floor. It looks like one specific kind of like room or pair of rooms just blew out. The rest of the floor looks intact, at least for the time being. Um, what are you hoping to do? Well, I say, here is a plan. <laughs> Let the fire burn. And stand here and pick off any stragglers as they escape the flames. <laughs> Is wise. Are you assuming everyone in there is a criminal? We can't take any chances. <laughs> oh, they're not. Oh, well, then I don't know. <laughs> this is why we have our fingers crossed that there is a shark in a tank or something in there. <laughs> um, you're not seeing anything like that. Um, I, I, I'll, I'll tell you this much. There are very few lights on in the building in general, and it looks like the lights that are on might just be incidental, like stairwell lights and maybe an office light that got left on. There might be somebody in there, but you don't see anyone. Um, so the building's mm. mostly dark, um, except for that lab upstairs that uh, has exploded. Um, Let's go investigate. All right. Um, so, uh, you approach the building, there is the front door, it doesn't look open, there are no lights on inside. Um, there's also, like, an emergency exit that is clearly, like, not one that you can open from the outside, it has probably a push bar on the inside to open it, but on the outside it's just... blank. Do you think, uh, uh, can Meridian use his powers to, like, open the latch of the emergency door? Like, like, to pull the metal... Latch I open? Just destroy the latch. Can With he ease. just like shape That's it true. into something else? Oh, almost undoubtedly. It's not that large. I've got yeah. this. And he just puts his hand on the door and he's like, mm, and <laughs> all the uh, <laughs> bolts come out and he's able to open. I'm all like, right. that is some magneto. Right there. <laughs> <laughs> I have to be really close and it has to be <laughs> insignificant metal. So I will say this, Troy, you can do this without making a power check if you don't mind destroying the door, or at least yeah. damaging it. If That's you want to make if you want to do it without hurting the door, that would be a power check. No, this isn't my alma mater. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. <laughs> All right. Um so you go up and hold your hand up to the door and uh just kind of pull apart the bolts and the mechanism and the door swings open. Um, so you're now looking into the fire escape. The The building itself is not uh, incredibly tall. Um, it looks like only a handful of stories. It's not like you have to climb like 10 stories or something. So it's not remarkably to to tall or amazingly tall either? Oh, God. <laughs> it, it, it looks like it's about a four-story building. What's a four on the... A four... Uh, I need you to use building. the descriptor. Four. 
poor building. <laughs> it's it's <laughs> it is yeah. It's a it's a typical poor, building. Literally, it's a poor height building. So it's a building of poor height. Yeah. Oh, I feel so sorry for this building. <laughs> Everything has to be described in those terms in order for us to understand life, Jason. All right. So if it's all like, right. So I have to take a remarkable pee right now. My goodness. You know. <laughs> the, the 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 height rank of the building is poor. Are you happy now? Yes. Yes. I'm happy. <laughs> yes. Now I All right. Uh, so uh, you're you're looking at a staircase. I'm assuming you want to run upstairs. Yeah. Yes. All There's right. no need to run. We don't got to rush. Move with purpose. Um, you yeah. make your way. I think we uh, do need to run. You, ma- you make your way upstairs. You kind of bound up to the fourth floor and get there uh, up to the fourth floor door. And again, these are fire doors for a fire exit so they're not meant to be opened from the inside unless you're at the bottom so you're going to have to destroy this door as well if you want to get out it's a bad day for thugs and doors <laughs> <laughs> so you easily are able to kind of rip apart the door mechanism and and the door pops open and the moment you do so uh, a kind of a thick black smoke comes rolling into the uh, the the hallway. Uh, at this, I'm gonna need everyone to make me an endurance test. Ooh. It's all right. You can Give borrow one of my lungs. Feet. Everyone, come <laughs> closer. <laughs> he has extra ones. Oh, this well, is extra. Endurance. An endurance roll. Yeah, this is just an endurance feat. You just need a green. Uh, yeah, it's a fail for me. Okay. What is my endurance? Because you don't have any lungs. Yeah, my breathing situation is not great. <laughs> well, I mean, if you don't need to breathe, then you don't have to worry about this. That's true. I got a yeah. 59, which is mirror. A mirror doesn't breathe either. She doesn't need air or food Oops. or anything. That's right. My problem. That's right. So, yeah, as a matter of fact, I think Aqualung, you don't have to breathe either, don't you? So it's just uh, me. <laughs> I think I do have to breathe, but I can breathe water. Oh, right. that's right. You can that's drink water. Okay. It. All right. So uh, uh, it sounds like uh, Meridian failed. Um, uh, I I succeeded. All right. You succeeded. I had to. It was tough because I wanted to. When I see smoke, my my instinct is just to breathe it in. So I'm like, <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> Got to fight <laughs> my instincts. I'm trying to hold it. <laughs> uh, Aqualung, what did you get? Uh, I got a fifty-nine. I got a great right. success. All right, and mirror, mirror, you don't technically need to breathe if you don't want to, so you don't have yes. to make this roll actually. I don't have All right. To. Okay, so in that case, only Meridian is kind of hacking <laughs> and choking and uh, is dealing with some bad effects from the from the from the smoke. Uh, looking out into the hallway, you can see about thirty or forty feet down. One of the labs on this level has just blown right out. Um, the, 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 the doorways and walls going into the labs are all like, mostly they're either drywall or glass. And it looks like that one was mostly glass. It's blown into the hallway. There's fire in the hallway. It looks like whatever that lab was, there was some sort of, well, it's a little hard to see from this distance, uh, but it blew a lot of debris into the hallway. If you got closer, you might be able to tell. I'll, yeah, uh, Aqualung will flop Go. closer. Go. Flop. Get a better look. All right. Is anyone else going with? Because as you make your way down yeah. this, this hallway, yeah, it gets very with. hot. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'd be like, oh, I'm starting to get the meat sweats, man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. You ever have, like, three racks of ribs and a and a cheese pizza? And you're like, whoa. No cheese. <laughs> she can't. Don't tell her. She can't eat it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So this is going to be another endurance test. This one is of only typical intensity. So uh, anyone who has, you know, uh, excellent or better endurance probably doesn't need to roll, but most of you probably do. Let me ask you this, Jason. Where Ooh. I failed, what are the mechanical complications? Does everything shift so, down? Yeah, you're one column shift down because of the smoke. On for everything, or just for my endurance. On almost everything, there are probably okay. some purely mental things that I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't make you take the downshift on. But well, right well, this now, it's crazy because if I fail this, now I'm going to be two columns down. Quite possibly. <laughs> this is actually to avoid taking some damage from the fire. Okay. What is your endurance normally? Uh, good. So now it's shift down to typical. I need a 51 or higher. Uh, and I rolled a 50. 
Oh my god. Oh. oh I'd rather roll it too. I know. That's awful. So uh, now you've gone you've gone full Aunt May. That's what you just did. <laughs> that would have been a pass at good, but a typical, that's a fail. Uh, uh yeah, well, and in in fact you were shooting for a typical intensity. So what this means is you compare your rank to the intensity rank, and if they're even, you actually need a yellow success. Oh. So uh, you were further off than you thought. Uh, Jim, what did you get? And what's your uh, endurance? I got a 64. My endurance is good. Eight. Uh, so, so that's going to make it. You're fine. I'm just uh, sort of, again, I'm in this weird mode where I'm like, I can handle the heat. I, I'm somewhere else right now. I'm barely even, <laughs> I'm not even feeling this at all. Someone must be burning tin. <laughs> 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 Alicia, what is your what is your endurance and what did you get? I'm gone. I am an excellent 16, so I don't think I can do anything. Uh, you'll still oh. need to make the check, but I think yeah, you can you can make it on a green. So okay, yeah. Ew. What? Is that even a possible? six? <laughs> <laughs> a six is going to fail. And last but not Ugh. least, Skid. I'll tell you what the results are here in just a sec. Skid, what's your endurance? Can I? Well, can I use my force, my force bubble to keep the fire yes. at bay? Okay, yes. I, I boom. I put that. It's like, hey, someone, come close. Oh, it's too late now. It's already up. You can't touch me. <laughs> no. <laughs> but he has his bubble up. All right. So the bubble is going to make it so that you don't take any damage either way. Uh. Alicia and Troy, both of you take uh, five points of damage from the fire oh, no. uh, as you make your way down this hallway. I can never um, regain those hit points. <laughs> I know. This is why it's like... <laughs> All right. So you make your way down the hallway and um, you see two things. The first is this mm. laboratory um, appeared to be some sort of biology lab. There's a lot of burning plants. Uh, that got blown into the hallway. You see like a bunch of burning leaves and vines and stuff that got blown out into the hallway. The second thing you notice is that clearly in the middle of the burning inferno, you see a charred and blackened body. <gasps> Barbecue? Uh, what is that? <laughs> yeah, there is a there is a very strong smell of of cooking meat. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> when I said meat sweats, oh, man, no! I was just like, no, I was chart. just talking metaphorically. <laughs> I wasn't talking literally, man. Mirror, mirror, use your powers to resist from eating for just a little while longer. That's <laughs> right. Uh, I Aqualung is going to growing. flop over towards the body to try to check it out. <laughs> All right, uh, to, to get in there, you, you're going to be taking some pretty extreme risk. That is in the middle of the fire. Um, so anyone who isn't protected, you're going to take a lot of damage if you go in there, probably. Um, I'm going to wave them back because I have my force bubble, so I feel like I'm probably uniquely suited to this. So I'm going to say, no, 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 stay back. I Let me. Oh, that's great. Yeah. Yeah. All right, um, so uh, this is going to pop it up to excellent intensity. I am going to need you to make an endurance test to get in there, um, and we are going to see what the effects are. What is your endurance? Uh, my endurance is good. Good. Okay, so that means you need a red success uh, because this is an excellent intensity. You should spend fire. karma. <laughs> okay. Uh, so you. Just, just before you spend karma, you should know. I'm not gonna that, spend karma. Yeah, a, a, a good. You need a 98 to make oh, it. Geez, I know. Yeah, I rolled a one. So. <laughs> well, that's that's less good. It eliminates uh, okay. discussion. There. Yeah. Um, so uh, you are going to take 20 points of damage, but ah. it is reduced by the force field, um, and I believe your force field reduces six. Uh, it's typical, so yeah. So six. So okay. you take 14 points of fire damage. Okay. Um, as you make your way into this burning uh, inferno, you make your way up to the body, and I'm going to tell you right now, there's no way this person is alive. They are burned <laughs> to a crisp. Um, they, they're, they're, like, one of the arms is kind of burned to ash. 
Um, and you can't even identify who this person is. However, give me an intuition. Feet. Intuition. Yes. Uh, 53, and I have a poor intuition. <laughs> so that is a fail. That Thanks. is a fail. All right. So you take a look over the body and you see no real identifying marks. Um, it, it, yeah, it just looks like a charred, blackened body. Question though. Were, yeah. When they were alive, were they married? <laughs> Are you checking? So you're checking for a wedding ring. Just, I, I want to okay. get some kind of a silver. I'm just looking for a silver lining to the situation. You're single now. So you you look down at the fingers and you don't see any wedding rings, but mind you, one of the arms is almost entirely burned off. Oh, no. Oh, um, what the west? Um, however, because you did say that you're specifically looking for jewelry. You do spot one piece of jewelry. Oh. A little burnt insignia that looks like a Star Trek communicator badge. Oh, it's that dude. Oh, it's the stick. No. He did not live long, nor did he prosper. <laughs> oh, no. I grab it and I stumble out of the flames on my on my swim fins. All right. Um, yeah, you, you, you grab it and uh, you, you basically grab like a handful of like burnt ash and like, cause there's no time to like mess with it. You just grab it. And like, you come out of there with like a, a handful of this ashen burned body with the, with the communicator. Um, I'm assuming at this point in time, you get the hell out of here. The fire yes. is raging. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, so uh, the group of you makes your way back downstairs. Um, you come stumbling out of the stairs down at the bottom, coughing and sputtering the smoke, having, having you know, kind of washed over you. Um, uh, the uh, Herb and uh, Lisa, the cheesehead, and uh, uh, Carl, a uh, big brute, they, they all came with. Uh, Rebecca went home uh, after the, the the robbery. She is not with any of you right now, um, but the other ones are. And uh, he just got back after after finding a payphone, uh, and and already in the distance you can hear uh, fire trucks. Uh, you can hear their 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 sirens going off, and Herb's like, "What did you find in there?" There was nothing but death. Smoke and ashes, and we found this. And he shows the remnants of the communicator badge. He looks at it. Did that come from Charles? Well, unless there was another Star Trek fan working in that lab. Which, I mean, you can't discount. Those people are nerds. <laughs> he, he breaks out a, an evidence bag and, like, holds it open immediately to kind of get the communicator from you. you I reluctantly it drop it in. All right. Uh, he, about so, what I could probably maybe get for it at a pawn shop. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> um, considering how burnt and, and parts of it were melted, you're not sure very much, <laughs> but um, uh, you, you, Herb takes the communicator and like the, the, the handful of ash uh, and promptly seals it up and kind of tucks it away and uh He's like, he looks around and he's like, you know, it occurs to me that maybe we shouldn't appear in two police reports in one night, so we should probably go. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, so uh, he hops in the van and uh, he's he's about to drive off and get everybody out of there. I slide into the passenger side <laughs> and I'm all like, okay, I know you guys are all freaking out. But we really are pretty close to the park I was talking about. <laughs> Crystal clear is the last thing I want to do is inhale any more smoke tonight. Herb is, Herb is driving away from the site of the explosion, shaking his head. I mean, uh, your as, name is Herb. <laughs> yeah, I don't do greeting. any of that. I don't do any of that reefer, though, okay? Listen. <laughs> All right, maybe some edibles. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, 
Herb drives you all back to the bowling alley. Uh, as And he drives the whole way there, just kind of shaking his head. And he's like, I don't even know what form to fill out uh, for a dead agent. I don't. Oh, boy. Oh, geez. Uh, and, uh, you know, uh, Lisa's like, are you sure it was him? Looking oh. to all of you. Did you see his body? No, oh, very badly disfigured. Yes, I could barely make out the signs of a body through all the tin smoke. <laughs> <laughs> Clouds of burning tin. It was a nightmare. Agent, do, you like, think, do you think that this was an accident? Or could someone have wanted him dead? Perhaps Kang the Conqueror. Yes, clearly. <laughs> this is the work of Kang. Kang himself. It has his name was, written all over it. He was, Only he, he could gather that much tin <laughs> and set it ablaze. Yes. He was just sticky. <laughs> Lisa's like, he he didn't deserve this. He he just he just wanted to be somebody. He he kept applying to the Avengers, the poor poor guy. He just He he was never very happy. Oh, and, and, like, it's really kind of... You can tell that Lisa and and uh, Cheesehead and Big Brew were mm-hmm. not close to him, but, like, they're still pretty shooken up. It's somebody that they've clearly known for a while. Um, and uh, as you pull back in at the, the red carpet, they're going back in for a drink uh, after after what they've seen this, this night. It's been kind of a wild night. Um, <laughs> and... Uh, Herb is like, well, if you like, I can, I can drive you back to your place now. Uh, yes, that would be nice. However, I would like to make a quick trip to the emergency room as parts of my <laughs> wet suit have fused to my skin. <laughs> it's an in- incredible amount of pain. <laughs> oh, oh yeah, no, we can do that. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. All right. I um, don't want to be a bathier. <laughs> no, 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 not at all. I didn't realize you had been burned. <laughs> oh, yes. I thought everyone could smell the burning rubber. But no. Yes, that, that was me. That, well, uh, you all came back in the van smelling like a campfire, so I didn't really know. <laughs> <laughs> Remind me never to go camping with you, huh? I, too, um, have been injured, but I can never be cured and will only <laughs> slowly perish. <laughs> but I can never be cured. I can... The technology does not exist for me to be cured. So every I point of damage I take. Well, is, we could uh, give you a oh no. wrench or something. Would that help? I would just oh no. absorb it. It wouldn't do anything. Uh, I will die one day, and I know this. <laughs> it's sad that I lost uh, one sixteenth of my total life value oh just walking into a burning building. I really should have. For no reason. In retrospect, this is why the Avengers have not called. I, I cannot be wasting I love one sixteenth of my total I, HP value. I will die someday. Yes, it's, there's no cure, you see. He's uh, such a nihilist. I just, I love it. I don't. Oh I didn't think that's actually, true. Jim. I don't know if you'd know. Maybe one of you guys know that. Wasn't there a, like a, a run in Thor like years ago where? He, yeah, I know exactly the one you're talking about. Yeah, where he couldn't. He so yeah, couldn't Thor couldn't get, be healed, and he, right. and if he died, he would not. Yeah. Yeah. So he had, he had to, to wear that like golden, golden armor, armor or something. Right. Yeah, oh, yeah, that's yeah. what yeah. it's making me think of. That's yeah. where he had to fight the Midgard serpent and all that stuff. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Sure. Baby, yeah, yeah, it's a yeah. great yeah. run. It, yeah. I, I can definitely see the parallels between yeah, that clearly. epic tale <laughs> and <laughs> <right>. Troy. And <laughs> Meridian, yes. Uh, clearly, it's not fair to compare because Meridian is so much more powerful than Troy. Right. But, but still, you can see certain. <laughs> all right. Well, Herb takes you all back to your uh, uh, apartment building or, What's well, the to the emergency room. What's the apartment building? Does it have a classy name? Uh, it is the Menominee uh, uh, Falls apartment building. Man- no, Menomin- sorry. Menominee Courts apartment All building. Right. Menominee Courts. Menominee. I couldn't help it. Yeah. I, don't, I don't know if you know that, but that's a thing. All right. Um, uh. So, uh, 
So, uh, yeah, he takes you back to the Menominee Courts. Uh, those of you who need to go to the, the hospital, uh, Skid, you can go and get some treatment for your burns. They they detach the rubber from you. <laughs> I feel um, triple the pain because I have so many pain-sensing organs. <laughs> Why does it hurt more? <laughs> Curse you, Fazer! <laughs> <laughs> so uh, you're all able to you're able to get some treatment, and uh, uh, honestly, uh, you're all uh, kind of left to your own devices. The next meeting isn't for another week, so um, you're all taken back to your apartment complex, where you're able to kind of tuck yourselves in for the evening. Well, probably shower and get all the smoke and grime off of you. Um, so I will do what I typically do, which is when I use my power eight times, I then go unconscious. Yeah. So I just like make crystals all over my apartment until I black uh -huh. out. <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. And then I, that's my crystal trance, and I just like black the f out, and that's how Great. I sleep in the middle of the floor. Yeah. Yeah. Meridian doesn't sleep; he just powers down. But tonight, uh, having taken some damage, uh, he he opens up uh, books, tomes, and just pours over them, trying to find a solution to his very particular uh, situation. <laughs> it's just reading about polarity, reading about <laughs> scientific American volumes. You're just <laughs> it doesn't seem like this has happened to anyone else in the world. So he's going yeah, through so. an encyclopedia of Marvel heroes. Like, what <laughs> it's like has this ever happened to Iceman? No. Uh, He's watching The World Is Not Enough, that Bond movie with the villain has like a bullet that's going closer to his brain and he'll slowly die. But as he's as the bullet gets closer, he gets more powerful and he's like, that's that's me. <laughs> he can't sleep. He can't sleep. And he, he literally can't sleep. He's a it, robot. It, it right. occurs to you that as you take more damage, you may become more powerful because you, there's less of you to hold together. It's true. It's true. I like that's that. But mm. that's the only thing you divine from this, and it's 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 a cold comfort for if you're nearly dead, you might be able to move metal a little more. <laughs> <laughs> it's a sad, it's a tragic story. I'll tell you, it'd be a short run. It'd be like a, t a twelve book series. It, it'd be He's like yeah, Black it'd be Bolt. A, it's like nothing like left. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, you're all kind of dropped off at home eventually, yeah. and uh, and frankly, you're given you're given a week. So the question I have for each one of you is, what do you do uh, with your lives during the week? What what do you what do you do to uh, keep yourself entertained? Do you work? Do you do you have a hobby? I'm, I kind of want to go around the horn and let everybody tell a little bit about what makes their character tick outside of fighting criminals and running into burning buildings <laughs> well uh, uh who goes first uh skid why don't you go I, first i think aqualung aqualung is bummed out like thinking about his new friend meridian's dilemma he's just like oh, it's terrible what a fate to befall someone so he spends m most of the week, much of the week, he like wades back into Lake Michigan where he feels <laughs> most at home and <laughs> seeks out his octopus friend, uh, Warren, and uh, tra trains with him and uh, just kind of talks about life. So there's a, there's, a, there's a lot of trout and some catfish. <laughs> but he can't, this, uh, stay away, get away from me. Because <laughs> he's weak, he's allergic to fish. So he's like, oh, no, don't come close. <laughs> Swear to God, I will <laughs> repel you with the force of a thousand bubbles. <laughs> <laughs> That's not a lot of bubbles. It's not a lot, but even trust. It doesn't sound like a lot, but trust me, you won't like. <laughs> Crystal clear. What do you do during your week off? So the first two days, I'm just basically tripping crystals, and then I get really <laughs> hungry, and I'm like, "Oh right, I gotta remember to eat, man! Holy crap!" And so I like stumble out. And I'll get some takeout, and then I stumble back to my place, and then I trip on crystals and just like constantly, and then I go, oh, I got an idea. And so I don't know where Meridian lives in the apartment, so I just go door to door knocking on all the doors looking for Meridian until I figure out which apartment is his. And it's like apartment 86 or whatever. And so I knock <laughs> on the door, and I'm like... Mm Meridian? And I've been saying that at every door, so he probably heard me all the way up the hallway. 
<laughs> the only the other door. person, the only other person you recognized was uh, was uh, Skin Deep, who opened up the door and was like, "Go away!" and slammed the door. <laughs> and I'll be like, "All right." And so I get to Meridian's place and I go, "I think I've got an idea." What, what if? A, what are you thinking? We added some crystal <laughs> to your body to like <laughs> fill out the gaps, man. Curious. I have not considered that in my studies. Where did you do your formal training? <laughs> so there's this thing called the Necronomicon. You see. <laughs> It's pretty badass, but we could talk about that later. Let me sit down in the middle of your floor, double check its feng shui alignment, and then I'll set you straight, okay? He, he puts his hand uh, towards the door. He's like, uh, actually, it's a little messy in here. Um, maybe it's very we late. Come back. It's very late. It's, it's four o'clock. <laughs> Um, yeah. Maybe we could do this some other time when I put the research in to the effects of these crystals. The Necronomicon, you said? Yes, I'll look that up. <laughs> <laughs> Pushing the door. All right. Just slowly closing the door. So as you're closing the door, I'm just like, have you ever had crystal Pepsi? And it, <laughs> it closes. <laughs> <laughs> mirror, mirror, what do you do for the week? Um, okay, so Mirror, she spends her entire week not thinking about anybody, but like she is sort of living her life like as if she were in a lifetime movie. So like you imagine like cutscene cutscene. She's looking out the window, like and then she walks over to like a mirror. She looks at her. You're no superhero. You're nothing. And she starts ripping down her curtains and throwing things around. And the neighbor's like. <laughs> like, like eventually it's like. Shut up. <laughs> So it just From spends like, the week going through various versions of like lifetime theatrics. <laughs> <laughs> Lifetimes for a superhero movie. Holy crap. This is productive. Great. All right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And, and and what does Meridian do aside from make sure that uh, Crystal Clear doesn't get into his apartment? <laughs> he's uh, he's depressed all week, um, or at least the closest feeling to depressed. Um, and he uh, he reads a lot. And then one day he drives out uh, to uh, this to the, this wooded area. He gets out of the car uh, and he walks into the woods. Uh, and uh, he's like, looks down at a pad, and he sees like latitude and longitude, and he's he's got his his devices. He's trying to find this area, uh, and then he he appears that he finds it. He gets to this clearing in the woods, uh, and he puts his hand down on the ground, um, and it's the site of uh, what he believes to be uh, the fault line of the only uh, earthquake that ever happened uh, in Wisconsin in 1947. Uh, oh, whoa. And uh, he's like just examining the area and uh, looking around and trying to see if this is actually uh, where it happened because it was not recorded on any seismographs. And so he's been looking for this uh, to see. He thinks there might be some connection to, uh, you know, a fault line and maybe a cure. All right. Uh, so you go out to this kind of place of natural wonder and are, are, are just kind of casting about. And you can definitely feel magnetic kind of curry, you know, eddies and currents kind of floating around in this area where the ground has been kind of uh, uh, tussled oh so long ago. Um, but you're not sure this is going to be your solution. Uh, frankly, this area is so generally stable that, you know, that one <laughs> earthquake was actually pretty notable. <laughs> um but uh, you know, uh, you, you're 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 learning, and and you know, you're still not healed, but you 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 think you're getting a better understanding of of how your power works. Um, I'm gonna go around and give everybody ten karma, uh, just Ooh. for the week of kind Yay. of uh, uh, self exploration and uh, 
<laughs> and, That's a good uh, word for it. <laughs> yeah, we'll call it. We'll call it that. <laughs> uh, the the next week, next Friday, uh, you are uh, once again. Herb shows up to come pick you up, and mm-hmm. uh, and take you back to the red carpet bowling alley uh, where you have another meeting. This one is pretty perfunctory. You know, the last one was pretty exciting. This one, pretty low key. Um, Herb checks in with you. He goes around one by one and just kind of talks to you about your powers, asks if anything changed. Nothing really has. So he's just filling out forms and and kind of doing the paperwork. Lisa explains that, yeah, this is what we do in the Oli. And she kind of snickers. She's like, I call it Oli. Have you guys ever heard an uh, uh, an Oli and Lena joke? (laughs) Um, no. What? Nah. I don't know what that word means. <laughs> oh, you're not from around here, are you? Well, I'll well, tell you what. It's yes hilarious. No. You'll find Oli so much more funny after I tell you an Oli and Lena joke. So, this is Cheesehead telling this to you. So, Oli and Lena got married, and on their honeymoon trip, they were driving up to Minneapolis, and Oli <laughs> put his hand on Lena's knee. She giggled and said, Oli, you know we're married now, so you can go a bit further if you want to. So he drove to Duluth. <laughs> I get it. <laughs> it switches. You think there is going to be sex, and then it just <laughs> drives further. Right? Yeah. Very yeah. funny, yes. <laughs> I got a million of them, so if you ever want a good Oli and Lena joke, you just let me know, okay? All right, just, uh, <laughs> I know where to come. <laughs> That one I, will suffice. I say we kill yes. him. <laughs> I think that, yes, that one may sustain me for many years, I feel. I get it. <laughs> yes, even he gets it. He's a robot, he gets it. That joke's going to go wild with the people in the Midwest, trust me on this one. <laughs> Just serving different demographics here. All right, so, uh, she tells a joke, Herb takes all of your information, it's a pretty low-key evening, you get another free night uh, uh, low key. Uh, game. Low-key? Where? Ga- <laughs> no. I knew it. I knew he was behind this somehow. He's he's everywhere now. It's the alligator one, though, and he's mostly cute. Oh, so, nice. uh, cool. I want to meet him. <laughs> Who doesn't? Uh, but you you get another you get another uh, free round of bowling, and it's a it's a pretty low key kind of night. How do we do in bowling? That's uh, why the, don't you the all really give me important. an agility test? <laughs> oh. Oh wow! Ooh. <laughs> Got a seventy-nine. <laughs> seventy-nine On lane four. Yeah, that's our lane. That's right. We're back. <laughs> I, yeah, I made it with a thirty-six for my incredible agility. <laughs> <laughs> A, th- just, a 36 <laughs> does just barely make it. So, like, you get, like, a 105. <laughs> it wasn't my night. Uh, <laughs> I have an uh, incredible 36, and I rolled a 9. Oh, so you got, oh. like, a... Oh, that's really bad. You got, You're like, a, a yeah. 42 or something. <laughs> oh, no. This is really bad. Uh, yeah. Miramira's Mira distracted. She's going through something. Yeah, she's a lot going of emotional then. turmoil. <laughs> Yeah, that's because she's been sent to Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Uh, I know. <laughs> she was like an international model, and now she's hanging out in the capital of beer and forged iron. Right? You know what's funny? It's ridiculous, these characters. I was international glass bowing champion back in Kiev. And you like bratwurst and tanned leather. <laughs> I was going to say, as ridiculous as these characters are, are, there is a tragic backbone to all of them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> like a real sad yeah. sadness. Uh, what did uh, Aqualung get? 60. 60. And, and what's and your agility? typical agility. So that's a, that's a green. You got like a 115 or so. Oh, and uh, and uh, uh, Crystal Clear, what did you get? I got 79. 79. Ooh. What's your agility? My agility is typical five. Uh, that's still pretty high in the uh, in the band, so that's that's gonna score you like a one eighty. So you win the night. Uh, and I look over and I go lane four, <laughs> lane four, and he's sort of like kind of <laughs> resting on this moment. So uh, Herb comes out to give you a uh, a ride home. 
Um, and, uh, you know, after a night of bowling and a couple beers, Big Brew uh, drives uh, uh, Cheesehead home, and Herb takes the four of you back to the uh, apartment complex. Um, you arrive there and are dropped off outside. Herb is like, well, we'll see y'all next week. Hopefully, uh, this week will be as uneventful as the last. You, uh, you folks have yourself a good night. <laughs> dun, 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 as he drives away. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, and, uh, he pulls away. And, uh, as he does so, you make your way, uh, up to the apartment building. And it's kind of a U-shaped court. Uh, apartment mm. building. There's, it's a uh, you know a couple stories tall. It's a U shape. There's a big courtyard in the middle with some plants in it. There's a bit of parking there, and uh, he just dropped you off in the middle of the parking lot. And uh, so you're walking your way back in, and uh, as you approach, there's all this greenery kind of in the parking lot, and quite suddenly, the greenery rustles on both sides. <gasps> <clears throat> oh, I had a dream like this once. <laughs> Whoa, this is like really deja vu in the sh out of me. <laughs> so you you are like freaked out, and um, the greenery, the shrubs on either side, suddenly kind of pull themselves together and come slithering out of the, the lawn toward you. This is exactly like the dream. <laughs> oh, I just sort of like... <laughs> so the four of you are out in the parking lot here and come slithering out of the greenery are two of these plant creatures uh, that literally just kind of pull themselves up out of the greenery and are making their way towards you. Um, oh, that's good artwork. Okay. Uh, at this, can I get everyone to go ahead and bounce me a d10 and let's get your initiative. Ooh. Jason, I love these maps. I love what yeah, you did here. Cool. This is this is another one of the things I kind of kit bashed together. <laughs> oh, it's <laughs> great. great though. Good, good. So every different color is kind of a zone. The buildings, by the way, are four stories tall. If you want to get up into the upper stories, that's an additional zone. But I didn't segment it out to avoid making the map into kind of a mess. Um, so everybody, go ahead and bounce your d tens. Um, Meridian, what do you got? 11. Oh, that's Ooh. quite good. Mirror, mirror, what do you got? 10. Ooh. Also good. Crystal clear, what do you got? 8. Which, if you turn it sideways, means infinite. <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> We're going to keep it right fun. up, so oh. it means 8. <laughs> Aqualon, what do you got? Uh, 9. All right. Um, and you all stay in almost the exact order. Meridian. You are going to get to go first. These plant things have come slithering out of the uh, underbrush. They seem to be making you their way toward you. Um, they are, they look like thorn bushes or something. It's kind of hard to tell. Mm. And we saw some sort of plant material uh, in that lab, right? Mm. There was a bunch of burning plant material in the lab, mm. yes. Curious. Uh, this is a bummer for Meridian because there's no metal involved in this. Uh, he, he does a lot better when there's, when there's some kind of metal. Um, so are they a, a challenge? Lot, are these creatures a lot <laughs> larger than us? They're a little, they're, they're about man size. They're about, you know, roughly five, six foot in diameter. Okay. Uh, what is laying on the parking lot near us? Just like, uh, is there any vehicles? Uh, yeah, there's some cars, um, and, uh, there's some, some light poles, um, but that's, that's really about it. There's a garbage can. Garbage can. Uh, all right. I will, uh, I'll try to pull the garbage can to me okay. and just <laughs> hurl it at the thing. <laughs> all right. Uh, so that's the size of, of like, you know, that's about, you know, uh, that's probably not three cubic feet. It's a little bigger than that, but, uh, whatever the next category up is, you can probably use that one. Uh, 25 cubic feet? Yeah, I mean, it's definitely not 25 cubic feet, but... but that'd be the next one. Yeah, yeah. And then how many feet away from it? 
Um, they're one area away from you right now. Oh, it's one area, so I need a yeah. red success. Oh, yeah. 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 No, you, you can wait for them. You could try and wait for them to come to you. Um, or you could move into their area. Yeah, I, I'm gonna do that. I'm like, all right. Hopefully, I don't take any damage. As I only <laughs> have. Well, we've gone over this. And he runs up. It's like time to take out the trash. And he just. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So uh, that is going to be a thrown blunt object. That's an agility test. Okay. Uh, and mine is going to go up to amazing where it's thrown. Fantastic. All right, you, you're throwing at the one on the right or the one on the left? Uh, one on the... What was I saying? One on the left. All right. Aqualuck, with me. You two, take care of the other one. Okay. Uh, uh, yes, my friend. God, I made it. 35 on amazing. 35, green success. 35 is a green success that is going to hit... Um, all right, so you're throwing a garbage can at someone. Uh, that <laughs> is, let's see, that's going to fall right around there. Uh, so yeah, that's going to do good <laughs> damage. So it's going to do 10. 10? Great. Yeah. Nice. You throw a garbage can at the one over here on the left, and it does 10 points of damage to it. Uh, the garbage can slams into it. A bunch of the thorns get kind of knocked about the vines, kind of, and, and this green sticky sap comes out of the whatever weird, twisted, evil thing it is. Um, and that is the end of Meridian's turn. Mirror, mirror. Uh, yeah. <laughs> She's sort of frozen, like stiff, because we're standing in front of two humongous plants and uh what <laughs> element is uh, vital to plant growth again usually phosphorus, phosphorus. <laughs> oh no <laughs> it's found in every living plant cell <laughs> no <laughs> run but fortunately you're only really allergic to the mostly pure stuff when it's bound inside of other things it's not as big oh. of a problem but if you were to encounter you know a, a strangely enough if you a were in a laboratory and there was a pile of phosphorus <laughs> that would be a problem but you know a in a plant or something that's generally not going to be an issue things that are really high in phosphorus aren't good yeah. for you okay well that's fine she still doesn't yeah. like it but she's willing to deal with it yeah sure um for this she's going to try something different because she has really high reason so okay. she's just going to after she sees like this garbage pail just go whizzing by her She's gonna like yell out at them. You two plant people. I suggest you leave at once or he will smoke you both. <laughs> <laughs> she points to Crystal Clear. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can make weapons out of your uh, out of your rhodium if you want. So you're not defenseless. But uh, I can you, make rhodium out of my. <laughs> you can make weapons out of rhodium. Yeah, yeah, yeah you totally can. Yeah, because you can make it and shape it. Yeah, you can, so you can make like it. knives. Yeah, yeah, it was. Oh. It was in. I'm not sure if you uh, if you check the write up I sent you. It describes how it works. Make a bazooka. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Take this. <laughs> this is a good one. This is good. All right, so she's going to grab her, her mirror and she's just gonna crack it so it's like a million different shards. Sure. And then she's just gonna hurl them like this. All right. At the plant group. All right, so that's going to be an agility test as you throw a bunch of razor sharp pieces of uh, rhodium yes. at it. So give me an agility check. Okay, move back to the right screen. And my agility is oh, good incredible roll. 36. Woo. That is a yellow success with Whoa. a thrown edged weapon. So you have a chance of stunning it. Oh. Um, I'm going to roll that here in just oh, you a mutants. second. This is dangerous. Great. Yeah, mutants <laughs> are dangerous. It's true. Uh, so I'm going to make an endurance test. Let me go ahead and roll that. Oh, that was terrible. Um, which one were you throwing at? The one on the right or the one on the left? The one that looked at me cross-eyed. 
Uh, we'll say that's the one on the right. Um, so you are going to do uh, a bit of damage to it from the shards of rhodium that go slicing through the plant. And uh, it looks uh, kind of stunned by that. It may lose a turn or two uh, based on, on how hard you sliced it up. That is the end of Mirror Mirror's turn. Aqualung. Uh, Aqualung sees Meridian striding up into combat with these things, and he gets freaked out that his friend would suffer any more damage. He says, no, Meridian, wait for me! And he runs with his flippers across the parking lot and jumps on his back, throwing his arms around his neck and activates his force field bubble. <laughs> All right, I so will you... keep you safe. At all costs. <laughs> <laughs> so you go running and dive on top of Meridian and activate your force field bubble. All right, no need to check that. Crystal clear, it is your turn. Okay, so I'm still convinced. Now I'm convinced I'm actually in the dream. Maybe I never woke up. <laughs> so I'm like, this is just. I got it now. This isn't like in the dream. I'm in the dream. I got it all figured out. So I'm going to like slam my hands down on the ground and generate a bunch of crystals all right. uh, that I can use as weapons next round, hopefully. Nice. Okay. So um, I will crystal create a uh, remarkable 30. Any, any, so we're in this like parking lot. Is there like beer bottles and other oh, glass yeah, sure. and stuff yeah. around that I can yeah, use. This is, <laughs> this, this, isn't a, dump. This, this isn't a fancy place, so yeah, you got plenty of trash in the trash parking Trash and lot. glass all around. All right. Well, and Meridian garbage. just threw a garbage can, so there's there's glass <laughs> everywhere. <laughs> okay, so 52 on uh, Remarkable. 52 on Remarkable is going to be a green success. Yeah. Nice. So that allows you to kind of turn a lot of the glass that's right around you into similar sized sharp shards of crystal uh, that you can throw uh, or or do what you want with on your next turn. And and as I create it, because of the sound, it also gives off this little humming sound as it's generated. So you hear this sort of low key kind of hum over everything. And sure. I'm like concentrating and I'm on it. I'm like, it's just a dream. It's just a dream, man. It's just a dream. It's just a dream. <laughs> All right, that is Crystal Clear's turn. Next up, the plants go. So this this plant that uh, uh, was... Uh, one of them is stunned, and it just sits there this round doing nothing. It's huge. Uh, it just kind, of, just kind of sways back and forth as it tries to recover from all the, all the damage it took from the, the rhodium shards. The other one lashes out at the Meridian Aqualung combo character, <laughs> and uh, it is going to attempt to grab, well, frankly, the both of you with its giant tendril. Here we go. 24 is not very good, though. I have pretty good strength, but that is not enough. Um, so it is going to lash out at you with a tendril, but it's going to fail to get a hold of you. Um, the, the other one is uh, stunned this round, so we are going to go straight back up to Meridian. Woo. All right. <laughs> you have Thank an aqua lung on your back. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you, friend. <laughs> I, this is the closest I've ever been to another human being. <laughs> so the, the tendril that just whipped past you is covered in thorns that are about six inches long. So Ooh. you're pretty sure you do not want that thing to get a hold of you. Mm. Now that I've gotten close, I think we should retreat. Keep our distance. <laughs> <laughs> Perhaps hop yeah. in one of those cars and drive off and start a life together. Yes, <laughs> let's go. Or at least right, so stop at the uh, gun store. <laughs> buy some yes. guns, come back. Wait a minute. Perhaps I can fashion a gun out of that driver's side mirror. <laughs> <laughs> can you? It's just crazy enough to work. Hold it's on. It's worth a try. <laughs> and I'll sure. leave the force field. I'll run back to the parking lot. Okay. And I'll rip off a mirror and try to turn it into some <laughs> sort of weapon. Give me turn it into a gun. The, the most give me inefficient. Uh, give me a power check. <laughs> he just went through a lot of emotion. <laughs> He's like, I'm charging in. I'm out of here. I'm going over there. First proposition. 
asking Aqualung to run away with him after he just <laughs> saved his life. Uh, all right, so wait, what am I doing here? Uh, <laughs> you are making you you are making a uh, power feat. All right, for that. you should know I have poor tinkering. Oh, oh no! <laughs> oh no! Uh, oh, but no. the success is it isn't uh, like whether I get the weapon I want. The success is how long it lasts. Uh, so I'm gonna spend I'm gonna spend karma. Uh, oh no! And let's just see. Uh, not the group karma, just my own crappy karma. See if I get close. Oh, I rolled a two! Oh, come <laughs> on! No. At first I was like, a 200, I did it! I rolled a two, uh, so a 12, yeah. Totally fail. I I really struggled to turn that rear view mirror into a gun. <laughs> so you 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 shape uh, you 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 do spend ten karma. I'm assuming Good you're not Lord. spending more than that. No no no. Yeah. <laughs> so you turn this driver's side mirror into a rough lump shape that. Harsh. I mean, is kind of shaped like an L. <laughs> I'm like a birthday <laughs> clown. It's definitely hey, not a gun. You? <laughs> that doesn't look like a puppy. <laughs> it is. You have made a uh, piece of junk. That's what you've wow. made. It's a piece wow. of junk. So, point. so that is Meridian's turn. Mirror, mirror. <laughs> so, um, yeah, mirror is like offended. Um, she feels like Radiant is appropriating. I'm just kidding. So she sort of just <laughs> walks over slowly to Meridian. It says, stick to balloons. Takes the lump that he created <laughs> and turns it into a gun. <laughs> and then can she shoot it? Well, you, you can attempt to make create rodeo a rhodium gun, gun, but that's going to be a hard check. I think she what? has a better shot than I did. Yeah, I think she does. Make a roll. Yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be a power feed for you to attempt to create something that specific. Ooh, Ooh this so, is good though. Okay. You see me, okay. you get the idea, and then you're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so you, yeah. so you need to get a red success to make something oh, that complex. Ooh. Birds will oh, You never know. You might get close. <laughs> That's She's going to refine that lump, let me tell you. Yes. So you have excellent matter creation, so uh, you need a 95. Oh, oh, oh gross. <laughs> or what? I just have a pretty gun? Or or you have maybe a slightly better looking lump. A lump of rodeo. <laughs> oh, that's rude. <laughs> <laughs> well, you could go. It's worth a lot of money. You can go trade it in at That's the gun right. store for a real gun. <laughs> Hold on, I'm gonna go trade this in for a yeah. gun. Oh, hey guys, keep them busy. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so go ahead and give me a All check. Right. Oh um, <laughs> no! <laughs> that was you for trash talking. You, I got that for oh, trash no. talking. You, I you, you somehow made an even Ow. less. Looking like shape of a gun, lump. <laughs> wow! It, what are we doing? <laughs> what you, are you doing? You've made a rhodium. A <laughs> you've made a rhodium potato. <laughs> what, are, what are we doing? I'm hungry. <laughs> Aqualung. No, use your powers. Resist <laughs> for just a few hours more. <laughs> Aqualung, what are you doing? Stay behind me, my friends. I will keep them occupied until you get to the gun store. <laughs> and uh, he's just gonna We're try to. We're the only like... people in America, in Milwaukee, without a gun, by the right. way. <laughs> <laughs> There's gotta be one close. We're in a bad neighborhood. <laughs> There's so, some guy upstairs currently polishing his rifle and he just looks out the window and he's like, nah, I ain't doing that. <laughs> yeah, I think he sh he uses his extra larynx wow. and his extra lungs and he shouts out, he says, citizens of Minimony Courts Apartments, those of you with firearms, toss them out your windows so we can kill these plant creatures. Hurry! That's a great plan. Lane actually. four needs your assistance. <laughs> the la hey, sleep. wait a minute! That's the name of our team. It's the Lane Four. Yeah. <laughs> I like thought the you lame said Lane Four. four. <laughs> right. four. Instead of the Fantastic Four. Right. <laughs> Someone opens up their window and screams, "Shut the hell up!" <laughs> <laughs> they throw things at him. 
Um, <laughs> all right, so you you as shout as they out, throw guns, we don't. You, mind. you, you shout out <laughs> to the people, and and as of yet, they have not yet thrown their firearms. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, the next. He's persuasion. That's a persuasion roll. He should be able to. You know what? I'll I'll I'll, I'll give you I'll give you a uh, I'll give you a uh, uh, we'll give you an intuition feat roll on this. Intuition. Ooh. All right. Yeah. Poor. So. This will go great. Uh, ten. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Someone shoots you. Yeah. <laughs> Shut up! Here's that bullet you asked for, you son of a bitch! Ah. So, uh, Aqualung, are you doing anything else other than your impassioned wow. plea? Would you like to move? Um, no, I'm gonna stay in that zone, and I'm just okay. gonna taunt them. Alright. It's like, you call those leaves! And just try to, like, keep them <laughs> occupied on, on me. Indeed, crystal clear. Well, now I've got my crystals all over the floor, and I'm like... If it's just a dream, then it could be anything I want. So you're all gonna go away! And I slap my hands on the floor and, I, and the crystals explode. Oh. Right. So I can, um... So you on. turned a bunch of bottles and stuff around the one that got a garbage can thrown at it into yep. crystals, and now you're causing those to explode. That's right. All right. So my damage range is double the crystal size, dealing damage equal to my power level, which is Ooh. 20. So do wow. I do a power check for that? Cool. Or does yeah, it just you happen? Do. No, you need to make a power check for that. Of course I do. Of course I do. <laughs> this'll be this'll be great. Oh, not oh. not great. Twenty-nine. <laughs> not, not great. <laughs> uh, Twenty-nine on the remarkable scale is still not enough. Uh, so does that mean they don't explode or they explode? Yeah, that poorly? means they don't explode. You attempt to manifest your power, but you do not manage to activate it. So, so I you're... slap my hands on the ground, and then instead of them exploding, I get kind of enamored by the, the way the light is striking their surface. <laughs> and I just start looking at them, and I'm like, oh, no. no, I don't want you to explode. How could I, I don't destroy want to explode. something so beautiful? You're all, we're all crystals in our own way. And I'm just sort of like completely oblivious to everything else going on around me. <laughs> so, uh, uh, Crystal Clear is staring down at the, at the ground. The, uh, plant creatures, the first one, uh, that is not stunned is going to, it lashes out at Aqualung, but does not manage to connect. Um, ah. it's, uh, it's tendril just scrapes across your shield, but it does not manage to, uh, penetrate it. The your other one, shield? Yeah. The other one is going to advance into the parking lot and it is going to swing at crystal clear. And a 40 is just gonna do it. Oh. Um, so uh, it is going to hit you with its tendril. Um, and that okay. is going to do, uh, where is it? There it is. Uh, that is going to do 10 damage. Okay. Nice. Um, as the tendril wraps around you and begins to lift you up off the ground. Got oh. it. Okay. Uh -huh. Um, so, uh, here's the situation. Crystal clear. Being pulled up off the ground. This tendril wrapped around him, bleeding. Blood is oozing out of him. And it's, it's like waving him around as if it's about to throw him through the air. I'm just air. sort of rocking back and forth and I'm like... I can wake up anytime, anytime. <laughs> Meanwhile, the other the other plant monster has almost engulfed Aqualung. It can't get through his shield, but it's kind of surrounding him with tendrils that are wrapping around all side of him. It's starting to look like a bubble of tendrils. Hasn't gotten in yet, but it's scratching and crying, trying to kind of worm its way in. Meanwhile, mirror, mirror, and... <laughs> Meridian are out in the parking lot holding and passing back and forth some hunk of metal that they're desperately trying to fashion into a weapon. And during all of this, a figure across the way appears atop the apartment building. You can see from here, it's kind of a larger figure, but it's backlit by the moon that is rising up from behind the building. And you can it's see it's, <laughs> it's surrounded by tendrils that are waving. One of its arms looks monstrously deformed, looking almost like some large chomper. And it just, the figure laughs at all of you and says, 
Sorry you have to die, but a villain has to start somewhere. You have the honor of being the first victims of the man trap. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> and that uh, is uh, where we are going to call uh, it here today. We are going to pick it up next week for the third and final episode of Man. Marvel Superheroes here on New Game Who Dis. Thank you very much for playing, everyone. I hope you all had a blast here tonight. Thank you. <laughs> that was awesome. Oh, that was a trap indeed. Excelsion! <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye, buddy. Good night. <laughs>